Well, we've been here for a few hours and there's a few teachable moments now. I hadn't been rolling any, uh, I hadn't gotten any footage today because I've just been irritated and spent the morning handling insurance debacles and stuff for my business, this and that, and then you get here with the materials you think you need, and I'll show you in a second, but this is that area that's always been, it was wet showing at the footer, and we were, I thought that it was humidity buildup with the bags of mortar here, remember, and you know, if you can orient yourself. Um, so now it's splashing inside, which obviously there'll be a window at some point, but this is still that confluence of fuckery above, um, where the bushes and everything are on the, or you know, packed up in the gutter. But you notice how wet everything is here? That isn't the case in front of these other windows. You really kind of have like a dry envelope. See, the, see how the floor's kind of, or the ground's kind of dry right here? I wish I hadn't had all the windows put in. I guess the ones at the back here. I mean, this is the only one that's got water on the floor here, right? And the conditions of the roof are relatively similar all around. But you see, this is the state of the gutters. Even though we're missing the downspout, areas like this, look at the side of the foundation, is soaking wet. Now the point of this, everything, see everything puddled here? It's gonna migrate down through the ground and it immediately can't get through that heavy plastic barrier that we put on, it's the black barrier. That can't get into this foundation. It can come all the way down and it could maybe go across the top of the footer but then it'll go off into that drain on the inside or the outside of the house and into the sump pump and get pumped back out. But this moisture here, into the mortar and in all over the glass block it'll be here eventually, is what you want to stop from happening. It's why we don't bring the siding, you know, we don't let the dirt come up. See a lot of houses when you drive around, the dirt's like this. Well that's splashing all up here and it's splashing all up onto the wood there, right? And it, you get mildew growing and it ends up getting soaking wet and staying wet and the humidity from the dirt. So we like to expose a lot of foundation wall, see how we run out of the splash zone here. But we really don't want to see any more of that if it's acid rain, if the pH is eroding on the block that was here. I don't know what might happen. Maybe the whole block foundation could collapse and cost you $200,000 to replace. So this is the type of thing that it seems like, um, you know, the gutters could come at any time. But that's going to be splattering all over the side of the foundation and all over the rim joist if uh, under the certain, you know, the right circumstances. And all of that moisture is, is still coming at us here. And while we've got way better materials and way better anatomy, we're still missing the most important thing, which is all the water that the roof collects, zoop, bringing it in tight and close, bringing it down to the ground level, sending it out in a way before we let it back loose into the wild so we control the area that the house occupies in space and we don't end up with these problemos. The other thing, Ed had to have, like I said, he wanted to walk through here and he didn't want this wall to go any further and he wanted the bathroom wall to take off at an angle and clean this whole area up. He didn't want it to be out here in the room. Well, I understood that. And at a certain point I quit dragging my feet because it was unconventional. Uh, to start with, this house wouldn't have had an angled wall like that. It's a pretty new, you know, condo type thing to put a wall, the face of something at a 45 degree angle and put a door in it. That's more typical um, in these places that are highly engineered for to feel spacious while being as small as possible. And so that's why we do that, and that's what he wanted here is tuck that back. Well, I arduously plotted out a 45 degree wall, and then we ended up with this other angle wall instead, and we built that all, and it had a plate on the top and everything because the door swing was going to miss the outside corner of the uh, vanity cabinet and the toilet. But the thing is, if this is the whole swing of the door when you come in, you can't get the door shut around yourself and he said that to me when I showed up you know we didn't think about the door and being able to clear it when you're standing in the room yes and so then I got kind of angry and I said you know this is why we don't depart conventions I was tired and it was the end of the day yesterday and I didn't want to keep arguing because at the end of the day it's the customer's home and the customer's always right but I always have a tingly spidey sense at the back of my chassis sense of when we depart conventions we throw caution to the wind and so he had a different solution he wanted to employ here um, where we went with a different door or bifolding closet door to get into the bathroom and we just, well I had to say time out, listen, for the same reason that I didn't want to do this before and we went ahead and departed convention and it screwed us. If we continue to push the envelope, try to fix a problem that was uh, a part of, you know, departing convention, 
by continuing to do more unconventional solutions, you will it will spiral out of control. This is why everybody loves to laugh with their contractor about, oh, could you imagine what somebody was doing here, what somebody was thinking here or there, here or there. This is what you want to stay away from. If you don't know conventions, you have no idea of knowing whether or not you're being conventional. And all of the unconventional problem solving that you do, however fun it may be, however good you feel about having solved the issue, it's only technically solved. It's not solved in all aspects. Um, you may run into problems. This whole area is a product of the stairway needing to be built to code, uh, but tucked in as tightly as possible and maintaining a certain amount of distance here, which we've only got an inch or two more than we actually technically need here. And so we made the stairs as short as possible. And then if you want to make it a closet under there and you want the closet door to swing in, we have to clear the face of this step. So we push the face of this out. And then when we come over here, then we have to have so much wall again to put an ordinary sized door in to get to the bathroom. But then we've squeezed this space to where the washer and the two bay sink can't live in here. And the minute we take a little bit more, well, then the sink can stay, and we just have an, uh, an oddball space to the side of the sink that really isn't doing anything, and the washer has to move over here, but it can't crowd where you stand at the sink too much, so the washer has to scoot down and then the dryer, and so we end up with washer-dryer here. And really, I want to see dryer there, and I want the rest of this room. They both, everybody does. So, to keep the sink here and the washer here, this is all the bathroom that you can have. If we bevel the door, we can't get around the door, so we bring the broom back out to a square. We have to enter a doorway here. It has to be of a certain size, so we can't take off with a wall until we've cleared the door and the trims, which puts this wall here, which means an in-swinging do door to left hand or to right won't miss this, so it'll have to swing out one way or the other, probably this way, but still, I don't anticipate hanging a door in here necessarily. I will frame an opening for a door. I've actually got a door, uh, like, on lock. Uh, we're doing all secondhand interior doors on this one. Um, however, I will bring this out to this, and that'll be where the face of the wall is, which means it'll fill in underneath the beam, and I snuck a little piece of plate out, and it's gonna, you know, do like that there. Now, I just felt a drip of water. I just felt a drip of water because the four inch stack goes out through this roof. But the question is, is it coming down and then leaking out of my unglued piping? Or is there a bad boot around the stack where it exits the roof and water rolls down the outside of the pipe all the way? Yeah. See it? I don't know. It is dripping from that. Okay. Moisture. See? Moisture. I still want to go up there maybe and I get up on that roof and just see that the boot doesn't leak around the outside of the stack because that's no bueno. So anyway, everything packs up from sink, washer, doorway to the bathroom with enough room to get around the door and close it and pushes this wall back to where you can't have a door swing in. It'll be out or a curtain in an opening and you can have what you need for space here at the end of the stair and you can go up the stairs and they meet code. And then we're down to using 2 by 6 here to get from the wall we packed out to be flush with the stairs and obscure this post. We've got to get back over there and then we've got to put a doorway opening in here and they'll let me do one here. We want to go this way with the door. I'd like to be a full uh, glass a full light door to just maximize the sunlight that gets into this space. Um, just as a best practice, again, if we're buying secondhand doors for around 100 150 each, pre hung interior full light door, that'd cost you four or five hundred dollars new. Again, fraction of the price, six and one half dozen in my book. Um, that's what we're hoping to get here. We're not going to flip the surface of the stairs up uh, as of right now. I ran that by Ed and he seemed to think it was going to be. I tried telling him I'm not going to charge you. Uh, I just want to see a usable, have usable space here. He didn't like that, so we buttoned it up for now. I can always come in now that it's screwed up, uh, screwed tight, and glue tr uh, wood triangles into the underside of it that uh, will set up and force it to occupy this exact space. Then later, these screws could be zipped out, and hopefully it would sit perfectly like a glove and fit those stringers without rocking around at all. See, because first it was screwed to them, then it was... Uh, 
uh, they were it was glued up with all kinds of webs and gussets basically underneath it and then you take the thing off once the glue is dried then you could use shorter screws so it looks like it's all still screwed together and those gussets will make it strong enough to use it as one piece and it would be a matter of just throwing the hinge and throwing the gas shock on it and it should come down and land real nice the gas shock's going to want to open it so really what you need to do is latch it when it's down and all you do is unlatch it and shh, it picks right up like the hatch back of a you know vehicle same kind of tech um I'm gonna leave that alone for right now because I got more than enough stuff to deal with. I wanted to get this wall in with the doorway in it then today and get finished that other wall, but my uh, hammer drill took a shit on me. I let the smoke out. I, 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 I bit the bullet and bought two brand new six amp hour Milwaukee batteries from Home Depot. They were a deal or on sale for 250 for a pair of them, uh, which is a good enough deal, but you may no longer send their batteries back for a warranty repair if you haven't got proof of purchase. The tools, sure, if they're under two years, just send it back to Milwaukee any which way, and they'll sort it out if it can be sorted. Uh, but the batteries, you need proof of purchase, and so it's no longer worth it to me to save buying them secondhand or anything, uh, because if, I, if they take a shit on me, then it's completely money thrown away. So I will, this is the first round of buying them full MSRP. Anyway, I put one of the new ones on, and I said, like I said, it just immediately let a little wisp of smoke out. I put that battery on other tools in here, and it's been fine. It might have been coincidence. This thing gets loaded up with dust from saw, uh, concrete dust. I've actually opened the hand handle, because uh, it's fully separate from the body here for um, comfort. So I've opened the side of the handle of the handle clamshell in the past and it's been a perfect solid mold of concrete dust this time i opened the body of the tool and that wasn't the case but that's where the smoke came from so maybe i will come back and open the handle now uh i've been putting off the this is an sds plus i've been putting off the sds max drill and so there's some of the things i'm looking at second hand and there's a few of those for sale nearby those places so that may be something i anyway i can't screw into the floor so i can't put any plates down and if I can't make those commitments, I can't be working off of it and kicking through it and moving it and making incorrect, you know, measurements. So I'm going to have to come up with an interim solution for tomorrow to start drilling and putting more screws into the concrete floor. We got this pretty much fixed and straightened out, changed. I think it's for the better. I don't think anybody's going to miss the angled wall there. They look cool, but uh, like I said, as soon as I'd start saying, well, we could live with it, we could do this or that, this is a matter of an hour or two. Um... I ran into stupid issues, otherwise it would have taken an hour and it would be done. Um, but I'm like out of treated, so I turned this plate around and used the complementary angles and butted them together to get it to go straight. I did the same thing up here for some strange reason, which I would have never... Oh, because those were all already nailed up into it and I just left this alone. That was, you know, worth doing, so... Anyway, it's just been one of those days where I raced all day to get here. I bought a bunch of stuff we didn't even touch or get to use yet. And then I ran into a big problem that had been my own damn fault for not pushing hard enough to avoid it. Got started fixing it. Tool broke. This is self-employment life. So I'm going to take this thing home and putter with it a little bit. Just see that it is 100% inside. And uh, then see if I can get it going or I'll have to buy something else tomorrow. A couple, Just a cool $500 probably. And uh, then we'll be, well, that was, yeah, so 250 from the batteries today. So we got a cool, you know, 750 out of pocket this week so far. And it's only Tuesday. Well, it is Taco Tuesday. All right, better luck tomorrow.
All right, working on tying in the under pad plumbing to the overhead plumbing. We just need to see the sink in here. Uh, I, I am operating with a 24 inch sort of width, uh, again, because that's gonna be a vanity cabinet if somebody wanted one. And so I want my drain close to the center line of that. I did bother to find 12 inches from the framing here, and I'm, this is just slid to the left to get set up, but I'm hoping that the elbow comes up and puts this real close to that. Uh, you have abil the, uh, the ability with finished plumbing, so this is your rough in to your adapter nut, and then your finished plumbing is your P-trap in that. You have the ability to find that um, uh, you know, anywhere you are in the cabinet. You can really go to one side or the other if you really wanted to, but I'm gonna avoid it. We're gonna shoot for close to center. We're gonna use long radius elbows to do uh, every bend that we can. We can use a regular elbow, which still has a gap here between the collars of the hub. When you get into an elbow that has no gap between the two collars, that's a vent elbow, and that is not acceptable for flow. So we wanna make the easiest bends that we can so we don't slow the flow down. Sometimes you need um, a short radius elbow. The long radius does from inside corner uh, return two by four to inside corner return two by four. Face to face, it's a real nice way to, and it'll sit in there for you. So I oftentimes horizontally use the elbow to turn a corner, a long radius. Uh, but again, the short is there, you know, if you need it. Uh, when I roll out of the wall sometimes, I like to see the short guy because we're not fighting the shortness of his radius when we fall right off and down into a vertical. And it keeps the protrusion of the adapter and everything back close to the drywall so your um, box flange actually covers it up. A lot of times if you use a long radius elbow to roll out of the wall and then you add the adapter nut to it and you get all done with the trap and you put a box flange on and you try to snug it up to the wall to clean the whole look up, especially when you have a pedestal sink, it doesn't make it to the wall and it looks like shit. So, and again, we're not fighting, you know, it doesn't help us much to be a long radius right before we fall over a cliff vertically. So we'll use the short radius at the top, long, long into the double sanitary over here. Um, you see me, I just popped a couple sticks off the outside corner over there so I could get in here with this. I've drilled those before, depending on the, the you know, if I'm drilling right along and I can see I'm gonna need to be able to install the piece, well, I'll just keep drilling until I've got what I need for that. Um, but in this case, I could just move them and we'll put them back in a minute. Uh, so now we're gonna glue this up here to this point. And then we're headed in this direction. Now we're gonna need to bush down to inch and a half. I should've, yeah, I'm gonna need to remember that. I didn't get a bushing, or maybe I have one from before. But then we're gonna stay at two, which is what both these connections are. We've gotta be at two, this is inch and a half over here. We're gonna stay at two for the washer. Uh, we're gonna put the washer on a stage here so that we clear, I gotta put a two inch cap on that. But so we clear that and it's not in the foot traffic of anyone and it's also handier to use the washer. But from this surface that the water washer sits on, you need a minimum 24, I like to see 32 to 36 somewhere, of elevation to the top of the drain. But here's the thing, I wanted to find a sweet spot here so if someone takes this away in the future, of course they're gonna have the problem of this, you know, but for whatever reason, if someone doesn't want, if they're not adding the bathroom, still want the washer here, don't want the stage, whomever they are, uh, this is not wildly too high in the wall to where it's, I mean, it doesn't hurt until you're way, way up. Uh, you can go kind of up at least four or five feet or more. Anyway, I, I wanted to find a sweet spot here, so it should work for everybody in those cases. We'll get this stuff tied in, and then we'll go from there up to the top. We've got to rise a little bit. That right now is a street elbow right into the, um, I think it is. Yeah, it's a street elbow right into that clean out on that elbow. Um, and so we need to go up some, so this goes properly downhill. Um, because things weren't, the beam wasn't dialed when I drilled, drilled the holes and stuff. We're just level right now, which is okay, but I'd like to see a little fall. And we'll glue up that stick to the upstairs bathroom. And then we're gonna turn around and head over here toward the kitchen. But see what, oh, and Ed's working on framing over there toward the uh, electrical cabinet. The masons, yeah, that mason's gonna be here tomorrow to finish up our windows and our blocks and we can fill through there. Alcove's got foam in it and everything like that. We're considering putting the um, we're th considering a combination hot water boiler slash potable water on demand and then we would try to tuck it all in there because of course the gas and the um, municipal water are going to come into that alcove to start with. Really cool to think we could get the combi unit and all the utilities in there and then just come along here to supply everything, run this floor, run the first floor uh, radiant heat above us and then do some maybe radiators on the second floor which is going to take advantage of this PEX that we put in. Um, it's just going to be about the same price to reset up the whole forced air unit. So, um, you know, it's six and one half dozen in cost, but the hydronic system is so much better than the forced air. The only thing about forced air is you can add AC. But if you've got a well-insulated house it, under a lot of trees in the shade and you manage um, 
the cool evenings, letting that in, and then button it up for the daytime. You don't even really need AC in a lot of cases. Um, and you can certainly add a window unit or whatever. So for now, let's get this sort of bathroom plumbed and then keep moving. I forgot I was going to mention that of all the times to be wearing my safety glasses, I was not wearing them, uh, was not, uh, when I was putting the primer on, which is just purple acetone. You know, it's just purple drink, I call it. But uh, it flicked. I don't know if it's on the elsewhere here. But uh, it flicked and tagged me right in the eye a little bit, and I ran over to the neighbors and just rinsed it. Um, and so I'm going to put my glasses back on. I think the, I don't like these glasses that much. They distort things a little bit visually, and it makes me a little bit woozy after a while. Usually I like to find a pair that I can just keep on and don't even remember that they're on. So anyway, if you're going to be playing games with glue and primer, that little dabber tip and stuff and flipping, and like I said, I threw it right in my own eyeball. So put your glasses on, even though it seems silly. And so now I'll go back to work. All right, like I said, short radius keeps us tucked back to where um, uh, all this can happen just really close to the drywall. Long radius, long radius, bushed up to two, into that and down. And this is just, I don't know, maybe five or six feet, so five or six quarters of an inch, so it goes up maybe an inch, inch and a quarter. Um, that pencil line, you know, was done. I set the laser, which is level from the center line of this, and then I find out how far away I am, and then I measure up a quarter of an inch per foot, and I make a mark, which is what that is. And then, like at the corner, I decide whatever height I'm at, and I do the hole and the marking all at the same elevation in the corner. Uh, but anyway, I s pull and snap a line from here, pull and snap a line down to there, and then push over onto the side, mark, and drill all the holes. I just drill the 2 and 9 sixteenths hole for everything. Um, you can run a 2 inch or an inch and a half through it. Um, you have more flexibility on the angle within it because obviously the inch and a half has more room around it inside the hole. Two inches just, you know, sort of barely clears it. And the hub end of a two inch fitting doesn't quite, I mean, you can, you might be able to jam it. But anyway, the hub end of an inch and a half obviously will fit right, I don't know if I can zoom in, you know, within the hole, which is a benefit. So, 
we're to that point. Now, I took a little out of the lumber here because the stack up, again, I've mentioned this a million times, I don't like to dry fit with or without primer, certainly not with primer because the primer can glue it by accident. Um, I didn't want to dry fit this length and this and this just to make sure that this was going to come in plumb. So when I rammed everything down there, uh, it was tipped to the left a little bit out of plumb. It was right against that seam, which again, you won't see in the end, but I'm a, I'm a professional. Um, I don't know what I was about to say, but this way it's just a low key notch and, a, you know, I pulled it over and so now it's very close to plumb, uh, far closer to plumb. Um, yeah. So now we just got to get the clean out in there. Where's the rest of my componentia here? This has got two pieces of pipe in it, but we'll basically go immediately to the clean out, which will end up with a portal in the in the drywall in case you ever need to use it which again I don't think we need to then all I got to do is get from the clean out to that elbow and probably add I'll add probably add an inch for the four feet that's exposed here I would like to go downhill that whole way if it doesn't quite go downhill anymore here it'll have the speed from there to zoop and zoop out of here which is a technical term uh, let's do that much and then we'll get the sink tied in as well I don't think there's any harm in, to, in committing to that. Now over here, I gotta remember how much I did or didn't glue. I believe I glued all that. Now there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Sorry. I think I glued everything that was in there and left some things here. I don't know why that looks. Oh, I guess it's just an angled cut on the foam. Um, I got that all insulated and stuff. Hopefully I don't need to get back in there. We'll, we'll see. I think I made that piece with glue. Anyway, I didn't get it locked into the uh, toilet because that piece of LVL has to come out and get slimmed and slimmed a little bit. All right, back to this vertis vertical stack here, and then we'll call it a day when we get that done. All right, just about time to bug out of here on a Friday evening. Uh, the mason's going to finish up our blocking and our windows tomorrow. Oops. And uh, so I just tried to make room, you know, for egress to all that stuff. You know, should have an easy enough time. He's done up here, so i got to put some blocks in there. Got to work here and there and all around in the back. You know, so that's uh, clean and clear and under control. Um... Uh, oh, can't forget the block under the front steps. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that, make sure he does, because you can't see it in here, and it's under the stairs outside. Uh, I got this stuff plumbed up, um, which I'm pretty happy with. If you notice, when I put the clean out in, I use uh, just something for a straight edge here, but rather than being perfectly at 90 over here, I clocked this out as far as I could so that it stays behind the plane of the framing, but it just might give you an easier angle of attack here. Nothing worse than having to kink over in there and the uh, plumber, you know, if it was me trying to service something to be like, oh, could have tipped that. Because once you're working through the hole in the uh, drywall, you'll be able to see that, oh, you know, whoever did this could have tipped it over toward us an inch, which may make a significant difference. That's all glued to here, uh, which just stays, you know, which is a thread out uh, plug. And that's all the more you'll be able to see. Um, although it does give you some, you know, sense of, with a mirror and stuff, you could see that these lines here are, you know, if you're sending a snake from either one, you could see quite a bit there. And you can, you know, it's six and one half dozen. You can also start and snake here, uh, or you could snake from the toilet upstairs. But if there's, this is kind of a bit of a, there's no harm in putting a Y in right here, you know, and it's there forever. I, and I will show it so people know that it's there. If you drywall over it and say to yourself, well, I'll just cut in there if I ever need it. And if I don't, I'll never have to look at an ugly access port. Um, if you don't know that there's something there, well, then it's no good ever. So I'll have to just make sure that that shows up or it makes it easy. You know, something like this they sell so you can uncover it. Um, 
I ended up with a stick in here because uh, I moved this layout back and forth so much that neither one of the sticks that the pecs were on ended up being a layout. And I was looking at that going, what the hell, what the hell? Oh, it's missing the layout. I got these. I was pulling on them to stand up and down because I'm old. And uh, I pulled them right out at the top because since I moved this, I had left those for Ed, but he hadn't gotten to them. Um, we are going to have to put dry, we're going to have to drywall this entire cavity because this is a, stairwells are a big opening and if the stairs being solid wood get, uh, become a raging inferno, then they can just go on, it can go upstairs and keep going. This is why it had to be drywall, you know, up in there and we'll have to have the same thing here. So this will actually feel a lot more oppressively small. I called and asked, you know, can I throw, some, can I go to these at all? Can I encapsulate these? Because the idea is that drywall takes longer to get burned you know, let fire through it. And he said, no, I got to see it. This is the plane of the ceiling in here. So the short wall is going to have to come up and I'm going to need a couple. I'll probably do a quick layout. So whatever, and a 16, just two sticks in there. And then that could be drywalled. Um, like I said, I think we're going to try and put the combi unit in there. That's going to mean that um, the room would be better off um, covered with half inches of plywood rather than drywall that way we can put anything anywhere you know uh it'll still be insulated but then where do we stop the drywall or the plywood and go to drywall i think i got room here for a 24 inch opening 24 inch rough opening that's a good question uh, i gotta look at that i'm gonna remember here because i can get a 24 inch door slab but of course that's a uh 26 inch rough opening which what does that look like here 26 is like to there. That's not really enough. Because you can trim the outside, but you can't trim the inside, which is kind of a bitch. Uh, but I hate the idea of a 22-inch door. I'll have to see. I'll have to go and look right at one or find one. Anyway, I'd like, it certainly won't be an in-swinging. It would like to be an out-swinging door or bifold. So what I'd like to do is build a rough opening here that could accept both a swinging but, uh, swinging slab or uh, like closet doors. I guess it probably wouldn't be bifold. It would just be a pair of flapping-ass louvered closet type doors. Got to look at what to do here. Because once I've returned that rough opening, then I know that from there on the inside and around is plywood and on the outside is, you know, drywall. And I am thinking about, we are going to need to install drywall, but I'm already thinking about how relatively pleasant it will be because I'd like to be able to come right in the back window or before we get the egress in with like at least 12 foot, um, pieces and just go right around the room, lying them down and just put them right up. And then we'll have to rip, because it's a little under 48 to the ceiling, but we'll have to rip all the others at the same size, which is easy enough to do. And they can come in and go all the way around, sitting on that lower course. We'll go right over the windows, right over the door openings. Uh, we'll have to notch the beam, but we'll go right over everything. And then I can go right in here with my router and router these openings after the drywall is up. So I'll just put a big you know, hairy X on the locations if I can't remember them. Um, but I can go in and find the edge and go around with the router. It won't harm the framing lumber to bump it or whatever, the drywall router. But that way we won't be cutting and fitting almost anything here. Certainly the electrical outlets will have to be cut and fit. Which brings me to the next kind of, this is stuff that, again, it's not what the episode's about, but I'm thinking about this stuff now. Um, we can't easily, we're going to want to, we can't come across this. The panel's over there. Electricity can come to here. And we certainly can go through the beam. I don't want to go through it a thousand times. But we can't come through the airspace here. So we're going to come through the beam half a dozen or something. Or maybe, I mean, we, if we did two courses there, we could do two dozen. Right through here, which is going to end up planed. Sorry. This is going to end up planed uh, up with this wall. And so we've got a big area to jump and you know if we were to make this a raceway then we're going to turn and go across the face of the beam then we're going to come through there behind the plane of this and then we're going to come into this area here and then we could lay and this is why i say half a dozen because even though we have the depth there to do two courses we don't have the ability to lay 12 uh lines along this beam but that's kind of beam is oftentimes a natural place to put a the raceway um but then once we're into the bathroom wall we can drop into the wall and then we can swing this corner up in this area here uh, if we come back down you're going to run into problems see getting past this post although we could come through that really isn't ideal so we might take the long route i guess here we'll hop right into the wall and do at least this much um 
and we may swing over and keep going to some extent or uh, whatever we don't however far we don't go there we can come down here go into the bathroom wall hit that switch and the light circuit and stuff and then take some other um, circuitry for the workshop outlets and stuff here the light switch for the workshop I like a left hand in swing door even if we don't put it in as part of this project it isn't necessary to close out the um, permit so that would make a switch right here for these lights and we're just going to do switched outlets in the ceiling because I got 15 or 20 shop fluorescent fixtures that just plug in and those I got them for like 75 bucks with bulbs in them and extra bulbs some person had gone to all LED and so this is a hundred dollar string of work lights and I was gonna and you can't string it through walls so you start running into problems I was gonna say to Ed I'll just give it to him for a deal and he can just keep it for now and we'll put it on a switch circuit trying to save them cost that's not gonna work it's cheaper with the lights that I bought at least for the for the hardware we'll put switched outlets in the ceiling and get them all right and then it can just plug in the lights for here in this room and over by the laundry and whatever uh, underneath the uh, stairs and in the bathroom all switched outlets but the thing is we'll think I'm going to think about it well enough so that the outlet locations are on a nice layout for LED can lights or something and so someday if somebody wanted to um, you'd probably wait until you were ready to finish the ceiling or something but uh, each one of those could be gutted you know you could take the outlet guts out of it it could become a junction box and you could go into that and hardwire um, you know and you'd be real close to you know keep it all like lined up maybe two courses in or one course through here on center two courses through here on center and uh, so everything will look sharp if you go to switch you know if you go to hardwired fixtures in a clean finished ceiling it's still the switch circuitry blah 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 but for him it'll be all outlets in the ceiling we'll just plug shop lights into it and hang them on chains that they we guess didn't come with chain we'll have to pick up a bunch of that little hook chain to hang them up or actually sometimes you can screw them up uh to the ceiling so maybe we'll do that so anyway that'll be how we do that um and we're gonna have the combi unit and stuff or whatever we do for heat here this this weekend's the big discussion on how to slice that um i want to get that done first and with the big plumbing drains and the big heat routes and everything making sense then we can come back and i can supply potable water to these fixtures and things like that because i can get more creative with that we don't want uh, to pay a heat contractor to get creative and miss my installations so we'll let that and i'll be working uh the one guy said we could work ed and i both for him or with him or help him and um, you know, reduce how much paid time he has in the project. We'll learn stuff and, uh, I'll be busy with that. And then I can, once he's out of here, whatever we do, I can get into plumbing the potable water, like I say. And so then, uh, we can finally get to electrical. The big problem with electrical is that, uh, the main service wire to the meter and out to the street is all hot. The bus in here is hot. And as soon as you pull us to have us disconnected at the street or take the meter away, they won't connect us back up until we've passed our electrical inspection, which means as soon as I need to move this shit, get everything disconnected, pull that panel down, finish framing and insulating put a new panel in the wall get the new service out to the meter and put all the new circuitry and wiring and breakers and all that stuff in here we'd have to do it with no lights no radio no battery charging nothing we wouldn't have power on the site so i haven't quite figured out just exactly because we're we that's going to be a hardship even if we have all the plumbing and everything else working if we take away the electricity for a couple of weeks while they've already moved back in it's going to be a no bueno so i'm going to have to um do as much pre-building as I can, get the panel down here, get all the breakers into it, get the service wire, like, kind of, you know, attached to the to the bus inside, get enough of it that I know will get us outside to the meter, and so as soon as this comes off, we can frame, put it in the wall, and weasel that thing back out and go into the meter box, and at least we're that far, you know, and, um, you know, if the electrician is cool, I may ask him before I do, let's say, listen, if we do all of that, and, and that looks okay, um... Is there any way we could get, you know, one breaker in the box and, you know, and go to an outlet? Usually it's very, very often it's nice to have an outlet sort of just next to the panel. Um, you never know what you might. So anyway, we get that far and then if we could be turned back on as, as a temporary or something, then at least we can plug into that one circuit and do what we've been doing here for a while, which is limp along with LED lights and a few, you know, most of the motors that I'm running, I'm running on batteries. So we're not drawing a lot on that circuit. I'm going to call and ask him probably next week about that. So lots of stuff to do here. And sewer and water's getting rebuilt um, Monday morning and Tuesday if we go long. So that'll be happening in some uh, footage that's coming up. We're going to, uh, once we button that trench up, I can get the skid steer out 
here and uh, fix up the yard, get all this trash, and let's go out and make sure it's still there. I hope it hasn't disappeared on us, right? We got, you know, got second and first and second floor stuff we got to do here too. Um, obviously, got a big round of taking stuff home, and I gotta get to. I just hate to take it home and then need it again. But it sort of all this crap, the blocks are gonna be gone. Um, that sidewalk stuff that I made out of the garage floor, all this lumber and. All that stuff, the extra concrete I can pick into there with the skid steer. We'll get the washer and dryer moved down in there. i got to get the dryer uh, vent in the wall as well. I'll show you where that's going to come outside. I'm going to move those two by sixes out. I'll get, um, the thing about the backyard and stuff is the egress window, I'd like to leave it out until we're not even trying to come through it with drywall because it would bark it all up and make a mess of it. It really isn't a high traffic thing. Oh, and I'd like to have it installed and they would put the well and stuff on also. So at that point we haven't got the clearance with the window well on there. So we got to get all the way down to drywall boards sitting in the basement and then get right on them about getting out here, getting that in there, finishing it up so I can push the dirt up on it. And then we can do final grading around um, the dryer. Uh, I want to plumb in the wall somewhere right here, and I want to get out through the rim joist here before we're in the garage. Kind of, you know, yay. Um, I also want to get them some hose water. Let's see, there's going to be all porch and stuff here. That's where the old hose used to come out, and it's always bros before hose. But uh, probably here then, you know, for the backyard. And I told him don't skimp. Nothing more irritating than pulling hundreds and hundreds of feet of hose, although he does it here all the time. I said, it's no harm, and I'll put one here in the middle of this side, and I kind of like to put one out front. Um, you know, Again, even if it's just for getting the grass to grow back on the job site, you can at least buy two or three super cheap sprinklers and break up the super long hose that he's got in multiple pieces that gets him to the you know back 40 and put a piece of hose off of each of these and a sprinkler on the end of it and all you gotta do is turn it on and off if you start trying to babysit for weeks on end moving sprinklers and hoses all around while you try to start a yard uh, a lawn dragging the hose all around scarring up and dragging the you know mulch and stuff that you've got on the grass seedling and stuff seeding and stuff like that i know that'll be over someday but you'll never regret having the hoses so you know this is a bit let me, let me put it here so you can have your hose reel and your gas meter and stuff is tucked away. If we end up with the combi unit in here, I don't think we can come through the rim joist there. I have to see what they say. Um, I'd like to try to, but if not, we'll be over here with the turn down for probably fresh air and the turned up 2-inch PVC for um, exhaust. But you got to watch how close you are with the furnace exhaust or burner exhaust to a window. And it's the same deal here. Here he's got, you know, Pipe Dream porch someday, which would be in the way of it. And even over around the corner here, um, there's a window in the basement again. So I'm not kicking myself for putting windows in. But we got to remember that we can't necessarily um, pump a bunch of fumes right out and back in, you know, a vented window like that. So, and here's all those fixtures. Like I said, 75 bucks for like, probably... 15 or 16 of those shop lights and all kinds of bulbs and a lot of them underneath those have bought bulb, got bulbs in them also and uh, allegedly they're all good the pod they don't like how close it is to stuff even though I was fairly sure that Podzilla put it here I think we ended up shoving it over just a little bit out of concern for thinking we wanted to trench and we're going to while the pod's still here although it should have left I wanted to make sure when we got to it we could go right on by so we can and that's good um, but as soon as we're done trenching and stuff and it's backfilled, i got to drag it away with the skid steer, uh, drag it away from the fence. If we decide this weekend we're not reinstalling the hot water tank and the furnace because we're going to go with that combi route, I'll immediately list those on Facebook Marketplace and get them out of here. Uh, so again, big plans for the front yard. we got some numbers to get this tree down because he's totally leaning toward the house and I'm not a tree guy. I'd have done something with it if it was... Less sketchy, but it's certainly small of a as small of a tree as it is. Uh, it's precariously um, tips tipsy. Uh, gutters and downspouts. They don't feel the pressure yet. I'm gonna try and make that this, the case soon. And we gotta do something with this door. I keep looking for a right hand in swing. I guess that is a 36 inch opening. So I'm gonna reframe the front of this house in all any case. Um, so I could go with anything 36, 34, 32. 32 is awfully tight for a front door. I don't really like to go smaller than this door 
and that's a 36 i'm fairly certain so i'll double check that once i get off the horn here uh, i'm going to copy whatever that width is and look for a right hand in swing fiberglass full light um you know because that's what they were used to before and I'll see what i see what i can find um if it comes down to not being full light but everything else we need i'll have to snag it we're looking for a sub 500 dollars fiberglass front entry door which would have sold for you know a thousand to fifteen hundred and beyond you know, when it was new um and so we beggars can't be choosers right all right everybody i'm gonna do some paperwork tomorrow come over and meet with the mason tomorrow i've got some running around to do for my business and then we're back at it monday hang in there These guys are just finishing up, getting our windows and our blocking done. Borrow the gas off for a second to get something trimmed up here. Concrete crew was in such a hurry they left us openings to be blocked, but they made them exactly a block width, so we had to trim block. You know, which is a bummer. Got that one blocked up there. This blocked up here. Go downstairs and take a look around inside. A weekend warrior thing. Put this stuff up there. Huh, I'm gonna have to ask what to do. That needs to be sealed, so we gotta check on that. And we got this block here he's working on filling up. Working outside on the window there, so I'll check on this situation here before they take off. Okay, finally got back here later on Monday, just about early afternoon. Mason got this all in. Mason Dixon line. Ed uh, has gotten apparently around the corner here, frame in. And uh, got that block in here. Oh, and he put it all back together inside. Go out and make sure that looks good, but I'm sure it does. Gas company, like I said, I didn't really love where he came in with that. But these guys for the water outside will go look. This is where the water's coming in right there. Which should be sweet. And uh, I don't know what happened here. We encountered this. But like I gave my, like I normally do when I'm ordering windows, usually for uh, wood construction, I will give them the RO or the rough opening size. And we'll work from there, you know, down to what kind of a window equipment. Uh, if you start muddying the water with stuff, you get into trouble. So this rough opening was an actual now i'm on the wrong side you're measuring the wood but right to start with it was like 37 by we're a touch under whatever this is because over there the concrete steps in so 32 but it was really more like 31 because of that so the width is fine but they did us these shorty blocks at the bottom and short blocks at the top and the difference in those is like actual five and a Where's the actual joiner? Five and a half. Same up there, I assume, roughly. Yeah. But the full block is an eight or seven and a half. So five and a half to seven and a half is two inches difference. Uh, and so I ended, long story short, I ended, at, ended up adding another piece of treated to get an inch and a half and then a half inch worth of mortar down. So it's like, that's two inches there. So two inches of extra glass block. I guess that is an awfully light. Let's see, that's only like a quarter inch of mortar. So I guess it must have been, based on what they know about not trying to hear people come back and say it doesn't quite fit, I gave him a rough opening and he didn't feel comfortable putting a full glass block across the top. Well, when you pull it in with, you know, that far, because you only have a couple different sizes of block that you're able to assemble into the unit, then you end up with this situation where, see the mason, he doesn't want to touch this up. This I added, and on over into there. So this is uh, something that we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we do a good tight job of caulking it up. Shut. Uh, other than that, that's what we got going on there. Now let's go out and see the guys that got the front yard trenched out. And they're going to be in and out in a day still. He still thinks that's happening, so that sounds good. So the pod won't be trapped in this stuff. It'll be free to come and go again tomorrow. He's got a check valve with a clean-out for any kind of service in the future. And it also keeps any kind of 
unbelievable flooding to the uh, storm sewers pushing into this house it won't come in it'll um it'll, that'll check out to hold that and then you've got uh, venting which prevents uh dry vacuum and then you've got a clean out where you can snake it and clean from here to the street or inspect from there to the street and that's all going to stay behind our intended um you know sidewalk hit stuff here these things can only be so close or so far from the window he's got our water over there he's got a nice he's kept a lot of the water line intact so they'll reuse as much of that as possible but other than that i'm going to stay out of their way up front can't beat three guys one day um i just quite didn't quite know what to expect probably next time we need to do something like this i'll go ahead and do it myself and that'll be because i keep an eye on their work today see just exactly what they do and don't do and then just copy it next time um but it was well worth hiring it out this time so we're not learning on the job site where we're trying to be very careful of cost i will stick to the things that i have done many times and feel very comfortable with um, most of those steps I've done, but all together, um, and all it takes is getting stuck on needing some help and not having it, and then you're stuck with a rental machine adding up cost uh, that you can't use. So, long story short, we made the wise move. Um, we've also got to get the sink, swap sink, into the plumbing. But we are unable to go past or around or behind this, and you can't take uh wet draining into this atmospheric vent because if you think about it you'll have water all the time standing in this trap which is by design so that you don't get sewer gas up into the living space which is explosive and stinky and so then if it were to run uphill to the sink and we come out into another trap on the sink that trap has water sitting in it all the time Okay, so your sink's here, trap is full of water, its drain is empty to here, this trap is full of water, and ran down. you would think you could send water here that would go that way, and you could send washer water, but here's the issue. When your washer drains, and it sends tons of water down this stack, which is quite a lot of water, you have to use two inch for a washing machine. So if it's a ton of water, just pushing, 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 you know, solid, pushing, 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 uh, evacuating, it's pulling a vacuum on this line that goes through this uh, trap to the sink and you can get it leaching you can get it to suck that water level in that trap under the sink you can get it to suck down because of all this water <laughs> slurp it away as the washing machine drains and it can dry up that it can dry up that trap particularly because we are nowadays going into this you know independent tube for the washer where these folks and a lot of people their washing machine goes over into the sink and then it goes down the sink drain which we could have done here it isn't the way you really want to do things if you can help it. Um, so anyway, the sink often won't be used here. It'll be here, you know, if somebody needs to wash their hands or do a little work here. But a lot of the time you'll be able to run the washer. So the other thing is when it sits there and you're not running water in it weekly, uh, if it's real dry out and you're literally running dehumidifiers in a basement all the time, that dry air can dry out the trap and the suction. Uh, this is why it doesn't meet code because because of the suction. Long story short, between the two things, you're going to genuinely have a problem with uh, with um, drying out your trap and all of that. So you can't do it. What do we have to do then if we're going into the wall with the sink? We've got to go around the corner and we've got to go downhill into this stack, which is fine. Except we're going to have to unbutton this pex and probably push him to the back in a big arc to try and get through here with a two inch pipe and we got to drill that hole with that aggressive forstner and we got to not nick that pex because then we'd have to put a splice and do a repair and that gets to be a real issue um so we can't be too low when we get over here but probably the first thing over here is going to be this reducing sanitary tea again like this one here right uh right at the and i went over there i didn't want to go right down tight to the floor. To start with, we have the ceiling tape here that isn't gonna glue well, so I was able to see that I had indeed cut that back to the, you know, expose what's gonna glue up into this fitting and not really disturb where it gets tight at the wall. We'll do the same thing here. I'll set this first fitting down to about flush with the plate, leaving an inch and a half exposed. I'll cut the tape back to that point, and from there we'll go uphill. And so I'd like to think that by the time we're coming through here, and what I guess I'm saying is I might even go up a little higher so that I have the flexibility before this thing gets trapped in that elbow, I really want to be in this area here, no lower than there. 
and then I can move that to the back and re-strap it down, and we can come through and around the corner and come out the wall the way that we did here for a sink over there, and then we'll have that stuff, and then I'll get this tied in overhead and keep going here with the plumbing drains this week, and as soon as they're done outside, we'll put the yard back together, hopefully. So stay tuned on that.
All right, so we're getting started on the kitchen sink in an effort to get all the plumbing drains connected up here so we can at least pour water down. Um, and I got the bottom of this cupboard torn out, which uh, was by and large, you know, uh, in rotten little pieces of plywood. And to, it had actually rotten, uh, had been rotten for so long and there'd been so much debris and material in there that we've rotten, we've rotted out the subfloor boards here. And that's because, to start with, this had what's called an S-trap. So it came down from the sink, it did an S, it went straight down through the floor underneath the sink in the kitchen. A lot of older style uh, places have got something like that. It does keep your drain out of the outside wall of the house, which was typically cold and could have frozen, and so that was the thinking, I think. But what you'll find is the geometry of the S-trap is going to oftentimes suck the water out of itself. It's going to siphon the water out, and then you have got no trap. You've got no uh, seal on the sewer gas, and so you've got stinky, sinky all the time. This place not only had the S trap, but it had a leg, this drain leg downstairs when it had a 45 inch of the vertical stack, and the water goes screaming down that, but also sits at, you know, water finds its own level, in theory, not, it doesn't do this perfectly, but this is the idea, is that it, it can sit in that vert, in that horizontal, excuse me, that angled run, that 45 degree angle, as it rips down there, it can seal and draw a vacuum uh, that sucks the water out of the trap itself. So either in, within the trap's geometry or downstream where it goes at an angle, it's going to pull the water out of that trap and then stinky, sinky, and really that's explosive methane gas that you don't want in the house, and it's a big, big no-no. You want to fall straight down because the water can cascade over the edge and go down, but there's almost always uh, an air route uh, past it because the water doesn't seal completely and that's a best-case scenario So we're gonna go at this point We're gonna go into the back wall and down in there So it keeps this area under the sink clear and we pass code with what's called the P trap So it's one half of an S trap. It's just a P trap. We're gonna go straight into the wall Roll backwards go down into this space downstairs So let's go down and check that out and that'll allow us to have like I say a clean smooth surface underneath the 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 in the cupboard down there which believe it or not that's where you're putting stuff like a, a garbage can or um, your cleaning products and coming and going and if you're bumping that uh, s-trap vertical all the time because you're hitting it with stuff well then it can become damaged and that can lead to a lot of these problems um, and so we're gonna be back in here I guess I don't have uh, the ability to put a light on there but um, uh, happily I can see through this rotten hole to where the side of the joist is and I'd like to think that the house is framed the way that it should and the way that we almost get to here this is a more perfect layout than this but this started on this layout and usually when you frame you should have everything the studs in a wall uh, underneath the joists and the studs in the next wall everything's all aligned so if you are using ductwork or anything the cavities line up all the way up and around the house and back if you stagger stuff it starts becoming a real pain in the ass to do things like use hot air or forced air ducts and stuff. So starting there, that's the reason why we do that. So I'd like to think that if this is the location of a floor joist, there's a, a, a stud in the wall round about there. I'm going to go up and drill through the back of the cupboard. And then, you know, based off of this position, I'll move over and plot up on the wall and drill. Then down here, I'll move over the same amount and reach over in there and drill up. And then I'll probably put an elbow on a piece of pipe that I feel will get us down into this space. And then put the other elbow on it here. And then we'll roll in here and then we'll roll down into the wall. And then we're going to probably... I don't know. The thing is when to turn and head over to the stack and we're going to go into a reducing sanitary tea just facing the other direction but should we fall way down and come over and go into it here and, and on our way you know or should we immediately come across the top and enter the stack you know higher up six and one half dozen um to some extent there up in this region um, you may be trying to hang things on the wall, and even though we put the armor over, it's uh, frustrating when you find that armor, you kind of mess up the drywall. Down here, less of a concern, so maybe that's a good reason to put it down. Uh, you don't often attach things or do a lot of stuff down there at the, at the, at the wall down there. It's certainly getting us uh, out of the house. It's going to be six and one half dozen whether you go over, down, or down, over. So anyway, just something to think about. And once I know where that's coming from, then I can go up to wherever that enters and glue in that reducing sanitary tea and make that lock that leg all in. And then from there up to here and over and up and over this way, we'll come after that. So I'll be up in the cu cupboard and down here back and forth quite a bit. I may need to get Ed's help. I don't know how much camera work I'll get to, but that's sort of the plan. Um... 
So I got a new basket for the sink. I got a new P-trap that'll get us into the adapter nut in the wall, which is part of the rough-in, which is that guy right there and that guy right there. And then I got a few elbows. We'll use the regular elbow, which has got a short amount of material between the hubs to roll into the wall after this nut. And then we've got to go down and then we've got to wrap back inside. And then at some point we've got to turn down into the wall. And then at some point we've got to turn over into that uh, reducing sanitary tee that doesn't quite get down to inch and a half. So I got a bushing from two to inch and a half to tap that into. Oh, and then the P-trap uh, may require some down tube uh, from this drain. That's actually over here, to the down tube, to the P-trap, into the adapter. This will be pieces of inch and a half into the bushing that goes into... Where's my other one? Here it is. <laughs> Sorry for the spinning around on camera. I know it can be dizzying a little bit, but that'll go somewhere there. And that'll get us up to the sink 100%. All right, let's get to work. All right, so I know I want to be there with uh, the upper portion of this setup and fall down in the wall, but I wanted to go through the subfloor and then turn into the bay and the floor between the joists here. But I can't, don't have a right angle drill that'll let me reach up and drill up through the sole plate of the wall here. Uh, I don't have anything that stacks up anywhere near short enough to go in there even without the handle on the drill or anything and drill up. And so I really needed to drill down through the sole plate, but then I thought, you know, the, the whole floor of this cupboard's missing and we're going to throw something in there. So if I stay under the plane of that missing floor and I come in here, we could go across the floor and then down through the subfloor here where I can drill. Um, and it wouldn't be in the way, but really, you don't want it routed like that. Any kind of kitchen cabinet renovation in the future, somebody's going to have to rebuild this outside corner, make it an inside corner when they can. And so I just realized, you know, and I can't, so I can't build an elbow that rolls in and down with this stick in there and an elbow that rolls back inside. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I can't actually build that on the other side of that surface. So we've got to work from, happily, it's just drywall on the outside of the house here because it's the inside wall of the garage. So I'm gonna set up an extra long drill bit. I'm gonna drill out on this, roughly the center point of that just so I can see where I am outside. And then I, through that hole, I know that an inch or so to the left, there's a stud there. And what we'll try to do is we'll make a little access port in the drywall outside uh, from stud to stud so I can tack the piece that I cut out back in. We can get in there and build what we need here uh, so that it drops, I'll drill down through the sole plate and get into the floor downstairs, get it the right way. That hole won't matter because it will be obscured uh, in the future and this will all be 100% correct. So let me set up and get that done. Well, that worked out loverly. Um, I'm right next to the seam in the sheet. I'm right across the top of the sole plate. It's right about where I need to drill right there so I can sort of just move, you know, three quarters of an inch down. Strike a horizontal line about the yay, about up here, about over to there. Um, I guess there's some benefit to going up plenty high enough. So I got the elbow coming to me, the whole down tube and the elbow going down into the basement happening right all in front of me instead of making two pieces, wishing I had made more of an opening. I don't know if there's any harm. So I'll probably go right along here to where it's the same distance from there. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna assume that this seam is really close to the center of the stud and pull 16 inches and that'll be where the vertical should be. And we'll go up plenty high enough to see both elbows and right along underneath this thing by about the thickness of the sole plate. So when I go to put it, the bottom edge back in, I can get a hold of something. I'll dump a bunch of mortar down all over my shoe uh, to make sure that that's taken care of and then we can get in there and work. Here's a case of assuming that they hadn't done this right and hadn't sheathed the house before putting drywall on because we are in the garage. But in fact, they have sheathed it, and at, the, at this era, they would have used boards, which is what we've got here. So I was excited after the drill came out that this is probably where the stud layout was because it was a split between two sheets of drywall. Actually, that's the full width of a sheet as soon as they set it to the edge of this door. Four feet put you there, and they can nail into the edges of it anywhere on this bo on these boards. So long story short, this is the layout stud that's just right next to our hole inside. So 16 inches from there is where we need to take at least this lower board out to be able to try and drill. We'll probably have to take two out. And so this ends up being an extra amount of drywall that didn't need to be taken away over to this side here. We need to have more there. So I'm going to do the same over on the other side. And we got to go lower because the drywall hangs down over the rim out here. So we're going to end up probably squaring this down, go 
going over and squaring that down and just come back with a because uh, this is happily this isn't like plaster or anything of a unique width we'll just put a new square drywall on the on the wall right there and um, call it call it quits on that for now more importantly we'll get the sink plumbed correctly all right I was able to drill down through the sole plate of the wall which is where you should be and as you can see I just pushed a stick into so that elbow is glued into the vertical but that horizontal that goes in is not glued and it's just to control the angle uh, and I was gonna have Ed you know do that and I was gonna push this piece that I prefabricated which gets us from that center line back there up and down through this hole here um, but I'm not gonna have a handy time of getting on the end of that and pushing up so what I need to do is build it so that that's sitting up like that rigid and coming down through and I'm going to basically build off of this part now over through the stud up the side of the stud up to here and up to a length that holds the hub end over there up in the wall where we need it to be and that's a good point again because if I were to sit this down this whole leg has just got some wood under it and then it's the concrete foundation that's exposed to the outside temperatures in the garage until the garage is heated someday if it's ever heated and if I were to go all the way up here then I'm in the kitchen cabinet in this space here that's adjacent to the wall that's poorly insulated and potentially really cold. So an ideal place to put this horizontal part is in between here and here somewhere in the middle to have insulation above and below and really let it, um, you know, um, just keep it isolated from everything. So as soon as my hub end is up through the floor back there uh, to this point, uh, I'm in good shape. So I'm going to operate with that in mind and try, you know, my goal being keep this end maybe two inches or whatever it needs to be. Sorry, I only have one hand here. Whatever this distance needs to be, I'll get all the way glued up to there and then I can go outside and glue the last little piece in and we'll have the drain connected for the kitchen sink. So I guess I'm going to start down here and plot out and drill through the wall. And I, I think I will be right there. Oh, I'm sorry, the clean out. We have to add the clean out, which is that Y, which is here somewhere. Oh, right there. We'll put him in there, and then we'll put this, and then I can plot over and up. See, you want to be careful about the order here, or you have yourself in a in a bad way. The higher the clean out up the up the wall, the more handy it is to sit the snake on the ground and go up just to go down again. Should have been close to the floor. There wasn't going to be enough room in it here to to glue it in, and then this, uh, and then we're gonna have a hard time. This is already at 20 inches from the floor, which is sort of the top end of that height. Any higher, and you start to have a really hard time connecting the drain underneath the basins in the sink, and then the sink needs to be lifted, and it just doesn't meet code any higher than about 20 inches off the floor for the rough in plumbing. So it forced our hand, and there wasn't room for the clean out here. So we'll go clean out next, then the sanitary, then we'll get drilled through and connect up.
Okay, so this has been glued up all the way up to flush with the subfloor. And then there's the elbow and the stick that needs to get glued down into it. However, I've been a bit preoccupied making sure, let's go up and look, um, that the digging and stuff outside went the way I wanted it. And uh, we've been working on what to do about heat, what to do about heat here. We didn't realize that, um, and when I say we, generally the homeowners here, Ed and his wife didn't realize that, and we kept the old furnace and we kept the old duct work and stuff, but didn't realize that the cost in putting it all back together is going to be the lion's share. Even though you've got the old ducts and the old furnace and stuff, it's just going to be massively costly to rebuild all the duct work in the basement. Now, like I say, I wanted to make sure this got all done. We've got uh, our clean out, our vent, and our check valve access. Um, do I wish it was a little more plumb? Kind of, yeah. So we're going to try to this will be filled here, and so I'd like to fill right up to those, you know, right up to over the green. But um, they got this done, and we've been talking a lot about how to proceed with the heat, and so I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. I was on autopilot, and most of it will be good, but let's go back down and see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, like I say, uh, this is... Um, in there for the angle, but that's just an elbow right on down. Really what you need here is a sanitary T so that you can come off the top, go over, and go back down and tie into the stack because you want to have venting. You want to be able to draw atmospheric pressure uh, down the pipe behind the water that you send down after a certain point. It's uh, for inch and a half, it's like 48 inches or something. Um, as the fluid travels, time you go 48 inches, we're only like here-ish before we get to the vent. So you really need to go, like I say, have a, uh, instead of an elbow, a sanitary tee, which is like this here, this is a reducing one, but instead of an elbow, we'll put in a sanitary tee that's all three sides, inch and a half, and out the top, we'll go over, we'll come back down, we'll do the same thing, we'll go here, we'll go over and we'll tie into another one of these. So that will provide the atmospheric pressure that chases the fluids down. Um, and I started thinking and realizing that's what obviously we're gonna need here, I got all done. It's like it needs to go up here and it goes back over to the stack. We'll put a reducing one of those bad boys in here. I could just cut what I need out and tip it away from the wall and put it back in there, but we'll go back over and vent this. And after I realized that, I realized even this is a bit longer. Now the um, washing machine doesn't matter because that, when you put the hose down it, um, it goes down next to or into this opening and um, atmospheric pressure goes into this system. Come on, baby. You can do it. What is going on here? Does it have to go that loose to come out of there? Somewhere here it should come out. Anyway, it's an opening that you put the... Um, pipe or the hose that you get from the machine goes down there but it can pull atmospheric pressure past that hose that hangs over the edge so that is not a problem there um no no big deal again here we'll have a reducing sanitary t here we'll go back around the corner and go down into so it just means i got to cut this off this two elbows and the nut had been welded i'll have to chuck them that's you know 15 bucks worth of stuff or less um we'll just i'll have to change this block so the notch is a little bit to the right because the new elbow will have to slide on to what's left of a uh, piece of pipe here, but we'll go through a sanitary tee, we'll put a nut, uh, an adapter nut into the, that uh, orifice, and then we'll turn, like I say, go back in and tie into the stack there. Um, same over here, I'll just cut this off, throw a couple elbows and a nut in the um, oopsie pile, and which is a very small pile, and we'll just go up to a sanitary tee here and go back over. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. I'm glad I stopped where I did stop, because I haven't done anything more than consume like I say, $30, $35 worth of components. Not a big deal. Um, I'll grab what we do need with the next material run, which I'll kick things off with tomorrow, so I'll make a list before I leave here. Um, this clean-out uh, won't fit with that stud, so we're going to have to square off and frame something out here. I'll save that for when I'm finishing up the framing operations here and whatever I plan for over that clean out. Um, there'll be a little bit of you know stuff to do with that. But for now, um, from here down and out of the house to the street, from each of those that have to be kind of changed to the street, everything, you know, you can have a leak down that if you wanted. Um, and you have to pour water down so you didn't, didn't smell pissy in here. But my point is that it goes all the way out to the sewer now, which is awesome. Um, the heat idea we're wrestling with, 
Uh, if we were to put a furnace back, it would be sort of in this region here, forced air. But then we've got all these big ducts that I've talked about trying to come down here. But we've got to go in through here and over into this room somehow, as well as up through the vents that go upstairs in here. It's hard to get, you can't go past the steel without going underneath it. And as soon as you do that, you're hanging right down in your head room again here. If you go around that way, you've got to go underneath the beam and underneath the beam in the bathroom in there, which gets real low. Or here, you've got to come through underneath this beam in here. So you've got to chew up this headroom here right in front of the window. You'd be coming through here with big ducts. See, this is why I hate forced air. Because you've got to get over here to get up to supply this room here and to go up these and go upstairs it's just it's just a no bueno system i don't want to see them doing it here i've been um sort of trying to inform them that like the cost is so similar to a mini combination or a combination hot water um a potable water and heat unit i'd like to sneak it into this room or underneath the stairs over where we put our manifold but then we would leverage the fact that we put the pecs in this floor and this would be heated and then we they would come in and they'd put the same kind of radiant um piping in this ceiling down here this would heat your first floor and it would all get set up to the on-demand unit that supplies uh, hot water that you can drink or have a shower and it would heat the glycol in these systems and the pumps on that system would circulate those and run on thermostats and stuff like that it's a very it's like a mini fridge on the wall with some supplemental stuff like i say that would fit in here or there all this space in this big room would be available one or the other of the closets would be available because we don't have to install the hot water tank where if we get a furnace and forced air i've also got to put their old hot water tank in here and reconnect that so that they have potable water in here um and so then you get all done the new forced air furnace would like i say tie into all the original vents and ducts but as we found out here when i replaced this beam someone cut the original beam all out to send a hot air uh duct upstairs so it's obvious to me that whoever did the heating in this house never engineered the system, didn't really know what to do or not do with it. And so if we're building all this new ductwork to meet up to the old and a new, you know, uh, efficient furnace to replace the old one, which is wildly inefficient, uh, it's not engineered again. It's taking heat all around the house to weird locations and places that aren't necessarily the best place to supply heat and take cool air back from. So, and then we've obscured this duct going upstairs. And again, all these problems where if you go hydronic and you are pumping glycol, <coughs> you just take the hot glycol over into this room and tie it into all these. You take the hot glycol to the system overhead here and get the first floor. And uh, then you could go up the old ducts, the old verticals here, which go right up to where heat used to come out on the second floor. Just take a pair of PEX pipes up there and put a radiator up there. And, uh, and so I'll have them just leave taps in these locations. So if they feel that they need to add radiators to the second floor, if the, if the basement and the first floor heat isn't getting all the way up the central staircase and heating the uh, second floor well enough for them, well, then we can just set a couple radiators in there right in front of the wall uh, register where the hot air used to come out, which is like a nice cast iron radiator that sits on the floor, a short, uh, tall, thin thing. And just go right into the wall with rigid piping. Turn to send, you know, uh, Adapt to PEX, go right down the old duct um, with the PEX and come down here and tie it right in. And then, then those uh, radiators on the second floor will supply heat to your house. Much better system, far more comfortable when paired with this well-insulated new bubble of, you know, warm air underneath the house that you're sitting on and a good ceiling exterior door up front there and the whole entire floor, this down here and on the first floor, is a comfortable temperature to bare feet or sock feet all the way over to the edges and all of that such a such a such a better a way to heat this residence and i'm really pulling for that we're getting some more numbers on that but again i was occupied with that today that's my excuse on not remembering that plumbing needs vents it shouldn't cost us almost anything at all and uh it's just i'm at the exact point where i would turn around and start building the vents basically so i'm glad i thought of it we'll get that done and uh then we're going outside, I think, to work on the site a little bit while we wait to lock in the contractor for the heat and they get here and start building it because another thing about that is I really don't want to go to all the trouble. I can't really, even though I've got the stub outs. I don't know where to go with that. Where's the hot, are we using the hot water tank? Where is it going to be in here? Are we using the combi unit? Where is it going to be in here? How do I get there and how am I going to connect when they get there? I really can't route water supply until I know all these things. So we're stuck on this timeline. I wanted to decide a couple weeks ago, but we've been just desperately trying to find a dramatically cheaper uh, magical solution that I don't think we're going to produce or that we're going to come up with. 
Um, we're going to get do our due diligence. It's going to put off the move-in date here, but it's something the customer wants to do, so it's, gonna, it's something we're going to investigate. I have an inkling that we're going to go hydronic eventually or in the end. I just don't think you can shake a stick at something like that when you're going to spend the kind of money that we're talking about. Um, that's the only type of heat that you should aspire to have in the 21st century, in my opinion. People say the HVAC is good because of the ability to add air conditioning. If you have a well-insulated house and you keep your doors and windows shut on hot days and high humidity days, and you use, uh, you know, in the evenings when it's cool and dry, you let that air come in, and at least in this climate zone, you are in really good shape. You've got trees and stuff here. You're not standing in the blaring hot sunlight. If you want to throw a window unit in, it's a far more cost-effective way to take the edge off, uh, you know, half a dozen days out of the year than having a forced air furnace installed because, you know, you might someday want to add central air to it. It's just not... It's not a relevant pro, in my opinion, here, when weighed against all the cons. And uh, like I say, you can always throw a window unit in on top of a hydronic heat system, and you're right back to you know a couple hundred dollars, and you're off and running, and it's not a big deal. It will always be nice and cool in here in the in the winter, or excuse me, in the summertime. Uh, the, it'll be a t comfortable temperature in their basement, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Um, and thereby, if they end up moving a bedroom down here to leverage that fact, then you can skip the air conditioner. Uh, you've just got a naturally cool area of the house. And there's no reason why you can't have a really comfortable space down here just to relax in. So that's my spiel. Uh, we'll get these drains uh, vented and then keep on a trucking. Well, I tried stopping the footage uh, until I was ready to act again to try and save some of the dead air that ends up happening in a lot of my video, but then of course I forget to turn it back on again and catch any action. Anyway, I um, found out that Ed, well, he thought he had nailed these all in when he moved the layout over. He had missed a bunch, which I figured, uh, which is a problem when we come to drywall, but actually if I need to move something quick for a plumbing switch, it's it's actually handy. So I just took these, disconnected both at the bottom and the top, which once this was cut out to put this fitting in, meant they were just sort of hanging on this stick. They could come out of the wall and this whole thing could flex back here and these could be free. So that allowed me to easily pick this up, set it, you know, stack this all in with this fitting and just make sure he's pointed, you know, in this direction, real nice and square. And then I put this one back in on that layout. Now this is the one that was too tight to install the clean out, so I left him over enough to get the clean out installed. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move him over to where he's plumb. Um, I was gonna say I could just add a two by four that stops short and then starts again, and that would be the layout stud, and this would be what it's attached to. But I've actually gotta be further over with this well, there is about good. If I left two inches off the end of this, then you can get the... I kind of want to have a free and clear area here. And the layout stud is right there. So, anyway, we'll, we'll, I'm going to install this guy plumb where there's room enough to do this, which is basically right here. And then we'll build off of it back to layout above and below here so that you can attach drywall with, um, you know, confidence there. So anyway, that being loose, not a problem again. Now the rest of these potentially being loose, even though they look like they're nailed, if the nails were cut. So I told Ed when these needed to move over to, because uh, they hadn't been nailed on top, pull them out from on top and wriggle them off and then pull the nails, move them over and reshoot them down. And if the nails were cut, uh, the reason I didn't tell him to do it that way is because if you leave a nail that could easily be pulled, it's 
it's going to fake you out and make you feel like it's been nailed again when you're looking at a head that isn't even actually going to go through anything. Where's my cat's paw? So I was specific about what I said to do and not do for a good reason. But of course you don't get, see that's, these are all, well, those were nails, but they're not well shot. So got a variety of things going on here and we got to make sure that we get and take care of all of it. Because if you're here with drywall and, and stuff's moving like that, like this, it's a problem. So I'm gonna nail that down too onto that mark and furthermore, I'll check these. Yeah, none of these have been nailed really or nailed well. I'll check those and then I'll get back to work. I'm sorry we missed this fitting install. I'm a little embarrassed that I forgot we needed this stuff. Um, but I thought, well, worst case scenario, people are gonna forget things and then they're gonna wanna know how to handle that. So this will make a good teachable moment. And then like I said, go ahead and forget to roll camera on it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now let's plug in and stay on and try to catch the rest of this little project. We're gonna get our vent cut through and back into that. And then we're gonna come back from the kitchen sink into here again for the other vent that it needs. And then we'll connect up and keep going.
All right, let that be a lesson to you about order of operations. I was so concerned about getting this fitting in that I really should have built all of this and come back with a full stick to there. And then when I was wrestling this up and getting this in, it could have swung in onto the end of this run and put all that together again. Uh, it won't be the end of the world if you see I just sliced it here uh, where you won't notice. Not that anybody sees this anyway, but it really irritates me to see a repair coupling in line, which is what I'm going to end up doing here. I glued it down to that point. Um, here I can go into there. I also scooted this stud over so it isn't um, three-dimensionally complicating my angle of attack. It's practically this stud now. It's like taking this out, although it's hung up around that piece of pipe. So it's just an inch and a half uh, harsher angle if it's tight to there all the more this way and it's a harder and harder angle to twist in so anyway I slid him over to there um, which is another order of operations thing really I should have remembered to vent this all in the right order over there we'll have a real easy time not to mention we're on an outside corner so I can install install where over here I can't be outside the corner it's an inside corner so I have a hard time there um, what we'll do is we'll slide a repair coupling on over here or actually we'll probably put it on this piece and make sure that ends prime, which it is. And then we'll go that way far enough and deflect this way far enough to glue into there. And then once that's glued well and it's glued well down there, uh, we'll put a little glue where they come together right here in the slizzot, where I don't um, you know, need to be right here. And then we'll slide the uh, cu repair coupling down and join the two and we'll be in good shape. I will double, triple check that this piece is long enough now that I hacked him off. He'll work elsewhere if he's not, if he needs to be a hair longer. I'm gonna check my engagement. Um, and make sure I don't have too wide of a gap down there because you'd think the saw kerf would be all there is but uh, I also forgot my measurement down here so it should have been the same but I couldn't remember what it was blah 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 don't uh, do as I do do as I say Mm-mm-mm. 
just how I always planned it. Didn't take much at all to make that switch. A couple of these, like I was saying, unfortunate series of unfortunate events, but in the scheme of things, like I said, our boo-boo pile on this one is real small, and I'm proud of that. So, you'll notice this goes down, or uphill in this direction, but it goes downhill to the drain. Uh, the vents in here level. Can you... <clears throat> I mean, this this is where you can use a vent elbow because this is a dry vent. It'll never see fluid. Um, sometimes a vent doubles as a drain. Uh, depends. Anyway, the tightest of elbows could have been used here. Uh, same goes for that over there. I didn't have any, and so I didn't use those. No big deal. I'm... What was I saying here? Oh, we're thinking that uh, I'd like to get like a Youngstown kitchen or a series of metal kitchen cabinets for Ed. I find that they make a really great workshop and sometimes they're worth good money and sometimes people just want them out of their face. We just missed an entire kitchen for free and that goddamn work truck being broken was the only reason that I didn't just run right out and grab it. I'm often um, very lucky because I can drop what I'm doing at any time and I've got a pickup truck and I can run and get stuff that people are trying to get rid of in the week before people can get there on the weekend or get a truck, you know, from a friend. So I've been screwed all summer in so many ways, one of which is not being able to hook him up here. I've got my eyeballs on some other stuff. I'll end up buying all those kitchen cabinets and all that stuff or getting it here or whatever. It'll be on me as a gift to Ed. I'll do something nice for his wife, but what am I getting at? I should put a drain and water supply somewhere on this wall. Now, if you're going to put kitchen cabinets down here, you have an inside corner. So something that faces you here, rather than being centered on this wall, is really centered in this two-thirds on the left. So we kind of need a drain in here somewhere and water supply. It can always be just left alone and never used. But if I get one of those kitchens, I'll end up with a sink base and a sink in almost every situation. And I know Ed's got the bathroom and a slop sink, but he's all the, if he's all the time coming and going all the way over here for, and he's, I've seen him here working in the, uh, working outside on the lawn with a hose or working upstairs in the kitchen. And of course he'll have the slop sink and stuff too, but this is something that I want. It's easy enough to do. And then it keeps the, the traffic down, coming and going, dripping and making messes. If he needs water in his workshop uh, or a little slop sink in his workshop, it, again, you could have that whole sink here for that kitchen alternatively you could put the sink base and put counter right through on top of it and just use a little bar sink you know right here you can run all around underneath the cupboard underneath the cabinet and get to where we give you a drain and same goes for water actually and kind of go anywhere here inside of cupboards and just put a little bar sink maybe in the corner just to wash your hands or to get a little water for whatever you may need it for here um i think earlier in the series he was dyeing plastic with plastic dye boiling up the water on the kitchen stove and stuff um this way you can run a little water down here and if he should like a electric cooktop or whatever that could be down that could be arranged um, it just means jumping between these two. So if I were to get a combo, which would be a T, or excuse me, it'd be a Y with a 45 built in to go vertical, and it would joop everything in here and over to there. So an uh, inch and a half combo fitting, uh, inch and a half sanitary T facing us, just like the drains facing the other way, and then a sanitary T to tie us into the vents here, and two more stub outs. So for $25, $30 worth of components and a couple minutes slapping that in there, it could be plugged forever, but I think I'll throw that in there too. That way it, uh, it will segue nicely or intersect well with whatever he plans to do on here for a workshop. If he doesn't need it, he'll never miss it. Um, but if he wants to do something, he'll have that. And so I'll get a, more, you know, a couple components tomorrow. I'm going to the store anyway. Uh, to hell with it, I'll, you know, I'll buy those myself. When I get like a drink or a snack or something, obviously I don't charge the customer. I do separate transactions, so I'll do a separate transaction on those even. So there you go. Um, I want to I want him to feel the love here. This has been expensive, so those types of things that are like again flipping up the stairs and stuff. If I end up doing that someday, that'll be you know on me. Um, we neglected to get insulation up here along the outside. See, this is your rim joist going down there, and then the house bumps out here. That's all going to be insulation, and because the joists are offset this way, this one is uh, two inches to the left, which made it easier to poke little slivers up in there. But this one being two inches, it was tight and closed. You couldn't get up this way. It's really difficult to slide stuff longitudinal, long, long -y style, hot dog style, all the way down. So um, all I had to do was let go of the blocking butt with a couple nails, and as soon as you rack this over, 
uh, it's shorter and shorter. Every All the more over you go, the shorter it gets. It came right down and away, and it tips out here. And so Ed can break that out, uh, put the um, bats up in there. This is misleading. The foam fell away. So anyway, you can reach right up in there. If he needs to cut the bridging out, he can cut the bridging out. Cut it out and um, finish that up tomorrow for us. So he's been chasing me around getting insulation in place. I'm going to get that vent loop in and tied over the stack here tomorrow. And I keep saying it. I know. I'm sorry, folks. All of you that really get irritated with my redundancy. Um, we'll button this up so you can do a poo on the first floor bathroom as my goal tomorrow. And that will be the end of a Thursday. And then Friday I'm set up whether the truck's fixed or not. I'm real close on that truck. Real close. Um, if it's not fixed, i got to have my machine moved here professionally if it is fixed I'm, i have a trailer rental i'm going to drag the skid steer here and then we're going to uh well let's let's get the hell out of here take the red bull and i'll show you on my way out we'll unplug the lights there you go um after the skid steer is here and that's got to get here for friday or uh, by monday the pod's got to get removed and we've tried to do that twice now, and they finally told me what the problem is. It's too close to the trees. I forget we pushed it the last little bit over after they dropped it off. I've been thinking this whole time they could get it from here if they dropped it off here, but I'm going to hook on to something with a chain. I guess they don't give it. Like I was picturing like a shipping container has lugs in the corners. So maybe I'll just under it with the forks, drag it out toward the road. Friday we got two big triaxle dump truck. 20 ton or more um, one inch filtered bank run which is going to look like that kind of that's our grading material dump those on the lawn um, I will have to move this stuff out of the site before we can get to grading but I just want the material here too uh, we'll slap the one two three around the corner four five six seven window wells on about one foot tall ones or something and then we can grade from the top of those down and we'll have a real strong flow away from the house here we're going to cover this type slime clay shit up off the you know real good that root um, all this oversize that was put in here so that the trucks didn't sink um, we'll get it all spread out once that's gone i'm going to probably go right through on the other side of the driveway and build that up too we want to be careful about building up around trees but they're awfully high so we can kind of fill this big low-lying area here that's what they did for us when they did the sewer already um, but this, I think, is going to be an extension. When we do the driveway, then in millings, I'll get any extra millings, we'll go over to here. This will be a car park in the driveway. I'm going to start tidying this place up. I think it's going to make a big difference in terms of how everybody feels about this. You'll be able to roll right up in the garage, kind of flush to the, to the floor there, and um, just keep plugging away. So keep, keep an eye out for that. I guess we'll tag it on to the end of this, I guess. I'm not sure. Who knows? Hang in there.
All right, we go up, whatever you want to call it here. The drain goes up and over and can draw atmosphere to allow the water to go down easily. Same in this case here, same over here in this case here. Uh, I ran the drain for this room by Ed and he said, nah, it doesn't need that. So I figured I shouldn't have said anything. One of my biggest downfalls here uh, professionally on this project has almost been <laughs> asking for too much input from design school and my background. A lot of times you want to avoid things being designed by committee because uh, you end up with a camel when you wanted a horse, basically, is what they say. Um, too much input, too much time wasted, um, opportunities missed in some cases. So, of course, you want to build something for someone, you know, the customer, it's their house, but um, sometimes they're their own worst enemies. So the heat situation is on its way to being solved. I um, spent my time getting that vented today, and then I thought, ah, oh, I bet you they're going to make me do this sink here. Um, I don't know what I was thinking before. I was so consumed with, I mean, way earlier in the series, I got to that plumbing uh, weeks and weeks and weeks ago. That went up to just an elbow into this base or this first floor bathroom. If you go up there and look now, I'm well on my way. It only took me a couple of minutes to replace um with a loop that goes back down, we're gonna to have to find a way to tie in the vent. That's actually gonna be the trouble. This was easy enough to build uh, to where that goes down again, but then we can draw atmosphere you know, by when the water goes down, which helps the water go down. So I had to widen the hole. I had to widen it, turn that off. This is for sure not a fire hazard. Um, so, you look up there. I just had to drill this bit over here. Oh, I turned the light off anyway. Both those, uh, I had to have a center to center width here. This goes over and is going to tie into there, which makes everything downstream from that a wet drain and really is an event. So I've got to get into there, which I think I can do. Uh, yeah, where is there's just enough pipe to go right into, I guess I could see if there's a street. Because everything over here on the left-hand side is considered the vent. Um, it would just be a sanitary T, but I'm thinking instead of putting two slivers of pipe in to install um, this guy, <coughs> it would be reducing to start with because that's a two-inch line. How would that look? So we got to be over there. And I guess we would roll the same as the combination fitting like that. But you can see the problem I'm gonna have is I just don't have what I need there, I guess. Anyway, yeah. These need to be two inch street, street, and that needs to be inch and a half, or even if it was two, I could push down an inch and a half. Or I'll have to shorten this and squidge, scooch him down far enough to be able to install that. That's another way I could solve that because now that that's been glued. Over here, on the other hand, has been all glued. We had a dog leg to move away from this joist because our center line from the stack was going to put us tight. So we dog leg over. We ended up in the middle here. And got that. Um, I put this up high enough so that that could be a street elbow. And then I built this whole thing out to there. And then we could put this leg with that street elbow on it already, go up in there, and then juice up that upper, upper hub, juice up this horizontal hole over here, and then go into that until this went set down in there because I have some ability to go past in these ends and stuff, so that was ideal. So anyway, that's all built from the upstairs bathroom, the second floor bathroom, all the way down. Four inch stack is complete all the way out. Um, which is nice. So I'm gonna get this vent tied in and then make sure we're glued up and old, over the concrete pilaster there, which was gonna be, I can't remember exactly. I think, I believe I did glue that. It's like, there was no point to not. But somewhere there it becomes unglued. I'd like to think that's even glued back there. It'd be sweet if I just had this stuff to glue. Uh, and then I gotta take that LVL out, take a little bit of thickness off of it, put it back down and I can commit the, um, flange to it and I can stick the toilet to it and then if we can complete this business here that would make first floor toilet sink 
and kitchen sink drains functional. These downstairs would be functional too, but uh, they don't have equipment at them, although that, so, because that stuff upstairs has equipment. I got to put a basket in the kitchen sink and build the trap. I got the P-trap here from days ago when I was thinking I would get that far, but whatever. Endless optimism. Um, but tomorrow is the last day of the week, and I've got, I didn't get the work truck back, because the shop works for tens, which means Friday they're off. And since my part wasn't going to get there till tomorrow, they don't work tomorrow. So, of course, it gets there tomorrow and waits till Monday for them to pick up the project and keep going with it. Which keeps me from getting my truck, keeps me from getting my dump trailer, being able to do anything I need to do. Um, I can at least drag the skid steer over here with uh, my buddy's truck. And because um, there's enough going to get the truck and taking the truck back, I can't do extra truck trips because that's where I spend my time. Uh, but we'll... Uh, have dirt delivered too. Yeah, two giant dump truck loads of grading material delivered and we'll yank the pot out there And so I won't be back to this this week plumbing probably um, Damn it That's the way the cookie crumbles Well, let's check that out tomorrow. Maybe that'll make a cool end to this Okay, it's been hard to set this camera up and catch important action it's discouraging like I said over here where I had it set up like I thought it did and I wanted to show you something that's the toughest part of doing this which is the once you understand how you would route it <laughs> uh, good luck executing that without you know painting yourself into a corner I had a couple of these uh, I'll tell you about this one you know once you're glued basically you've either got a, at a point where you can't if everything's glued up and you can't get it to fit tight you gotta rip it back apart before the glue sets up or you'll have it glued into something that you've committed and then you can't get that apart without cutting it etc it's a nice way to do a system because everything's got chemical uh, melting welds that make this all you know basically one piece but that's if you get it where you want it so um, I got the kitchen sink vented, which is to say the fluids come down and fall down the stack, which has got atmospheric pressure on it because it's just open up out through the roof. Even the rainwater that falls on it, rainwater that falls in that little area of the open end of your stack is all the time washing down and away a little bit. So you also have to pull atmospheric pressure off to follow that fluid down. And like this isn't really... I don't know what counts here because you got a wet stack and a dry stack, or dry vent and wet vent. So this is a wet vent because even though you're pulling atmospheric pressure to chase this moisture down or this water, whatever you're washing down there, you very well may have water coming from above. Um, same goes upstairs. I mean, all the way up to where the upstairs bathroom connects into it, there could be stuff, you know, falling down. So to some extent, that's all. I think a wet vent. Uh, it's tricky. Because over here in this kitchen bathroom, or this first floor bathroom situation, I had hoped to do just a, a drain line for it. And come down through a big sweep elbow to keep the fluids flowing easy. And through a, a combo fitting right there, which is a, we talked about this. It's a, um, it's a Y with a 45 built right in so that it, takes off at a 90 degree angle the connection is in a 90 degree angle to this axis but you're joining flow through a 45 and then a y and you're going so if i wanted to vent that which i ended up having to do i want to be previous to the flow so if the atmospheric pressure is going up and following the flow back down it's uh, not flowing by where it's drawing the atmospheric pressure from and so unfortunately I had built this upstairs to where the drain goes on the right and the fluids come down the right hand side and the venting follows on the left but as you can see here if I'd have done that my runs would have been lined up pulling atmosphere downstream of where the fluids go by so even though I built this physically to suit the situation in the cupboard upstairs I had to build the mirror image of this uh, and then force things to work in the cupboard just so that my connections didn't have to cross down here somewhere And I didn't have to tip the cheesy ladder down and fall and crack my skull on the uh, concrete anyway, so we got that built, but um, The atmosphere that I'm pulling uh, over here goes right up to a toilet which has got a trap in it so I can't suck and so the atmospheric pressure is actually uh, you know, it's all the way underground to the stack where this, if you remember, it ties in here. And then we could zoom back up and get 
atmospheric pressure from the top of the house all the way back up and around and up there to chase that sink down. I think that there's a chance he might pinch me on that not being legitimate as far as code. Um, it'll certainly help that sink to flow better than the sink used to flow. But really what he might want to see, and i got to be prepared for this, is for that route, that venting route on the right-hand side as we look at it here, he may want that to turn and go over and go up and connect to this vertical stack if there's room. But, of course, the stairwell is here. That's in the stairwell wall. So I really don't have room to enter on that side because if you go up, you're right in the door jam, basically. So I'm going to leave this. I've been asking a lot of uh, permission and not doing a lot of begging forgiveness so far. Um, this one may be something I beg for forgiveness in the sense that I'm just going to leave that and see if anybody inspecting this does the mental gymnastics on it. They may have a quick rule of thumb and say, oh, whatever, obviously can't do that, and so I'll have to fix it. Anyway, that I'm going to leave for right now. We're glued all the way on up through and over to the toilet upstairs. I took a little bit of thickness off that LVL repair so that I could commit the uh, flange down to the floor. Uh, let's go up and look at that. So uh, before I do that, I guess I'll say I was down to finishing right here. All i got to do is glue put glue there and drive this in. But the thing is, if I glue that up and come down here to beat it, I can't be sure that it's gonna line up. I need somebody down there to control that, so we gotta get Ed, and he was home already, so we'll do this in the morning. Then that'll be a little long, because I had to add that fitting to tie the vent in. And then I can do the calculations on how to get a two inch leg to a 45 right there, which is what I've got laying right here from what I had mocked up before. Uh, and once I work out that it'll fit and dry fit it, then I could juice everything up and sort of roll smush it into a sense of, you know, completion there. I have no alternatives. Um, so we'll see. I am free. I was free to move this side to side a little bit, but I don't really have that freedom right now. It's going to be, it's going to be tough because that's rigid down there too. And the only help that I'm, I'm going to have here is the fact that we're coming in at a 45 degree angle. So if everything's real wet, I can spin and jam and beat it, or I'll have to have a lever here to shove it to where everything jumps into a center line that's uh, correct. It's going to be tricky. So anyway, I'm going to need another set of hands there, so we held off on that. Then I decided, well, I can go up and get the finished plumbing from, I got a new basket for the kitchen sink, but I was all ready to put this in here, but I forgot this one friggin' sink adapter. I, don't, I can't believe, it's never happened to me before, believe me, this never happens, this, this never happens. Um, I juiced this all up with cleaner, and it just sits loose. It doesn't actually come in tight and jam, it makes me uncomfortable. Because if I should have a failed and leaky joint there, I gotta go and dig everything, again, it's all glued. I really would want one that comes in snug, so I'll get a different one. And then this nut and this nut need a big set of pliers. Uh, I got some plumber's pliers and stuff that I didn't bring out to the site yet. But I'm going to need those to take that apart, take this down and out. Then I can get a new, I guess they're used to a deep basket. I got a shallow basket. I just feel like with the amount of, uh, you know, gross crap that gets stuck in it, I just feel like they're going to be better off with it. I really like things to stay the way that they always were. So I make it a different basket, I guess. I didn't know how to choose when I was at the store. But then I can get all this connected up into that adapter, and we're done under the kitchen sink, so I'll leave that for tomorrow. It's sitting right there. Your new sink adapter. Got to remember to bring those big old players. Hey, I never, <laughs> I never noticed the end of this uh, do doorknob is missing. I don't know what the heck. Um, so then, like I say, I was able You can see my angled kind of marks on it very slightly, but we're uh, just a hair under the surface of the subfloor right now, which is pretty ideal. And then over here, uh, like I said, he ended up, I asked him, and he said, yeah, rather than just having the elbow that was here, gotta have the sanitary tee and chase uh, the fluids down with atmospheric pressure. So you may have noticed around here, I didn't go with a lot of vent elbows. Those are the elbows where the hubs touch right here. There's no exposed bend. Uh, those are for venting only. They shouldn't have fluid flowing. It's too tight of a turn, but they make them really uh, consolidated so that you can do this really tight 
turnarounds and stuff. So I use some bent elbows there. This is sort of handled to the extent that it's gonna be, you know, we gotta pick our battles around here. Um, out in the garage. And so downstairs you'll see in the background if you're looking to have a laugh at your old pal Chazzy, I used some long radius and regular radius elbows in vent systems um, because I was trying to use up little short pieces of pipe to start with and try to limit how many times I ran to the store. Uh, this here is the back of the kitchen. So we just went through and out the other side and back down, fluids, venting, and this will all get fire blocked. And then I will likely sit, I'll probably go to the trouble to put an inch of XPS and a half an inch of EPS since we have scraps of it. And a full inch and a half looks like it'll fit behind this, but I want to protect this with an ultra high R value material by the thickness. So for as much thickness as I have, I want to get that much insulation behind those or box in all around them, and then I'll probably set some rock wool to either side of them too. Because, you know, this out here isn't warm. It has the ability to become enwarmed in the future, you know, because we did that. We did that pack circuit in here, but that's not going to be the case until it's insulated and the doors are finished down, which we're not doing as part of this project. So once again, money. So that'll be tomorrow. Then we'll have the ability to say, hey, the first floor and basement drains are all connected up. We're going to get the concrete set aside. We got the hot water tank and the furnace getting rained on right now. <laughs> I better... I don't know, I'm trying to sell those secondhand. I'm going to come in here in the following day, throw the trash uh, concrete stuff. That has to go back to concrete reclamation. Um, we can get a little bit back for the blocks after a restocking fee, if you can believe it. The mortar's got a restocking fee, so that's some other stuff I can load and just run really close locally. Rebar's got to go back. Let's just get all this shit cleaned up. I've been trying to sell the ductwork with that forced air furnace because somebody's got a... For 250 bucks, somebody could do one hell of a garage or a hunting cabin or a seasonal property kind of uh, low budget heat situation if it doesn't get rained on too much. So we'll get that, try to get that moved on out of here and make this whole thing look nice. Hey, look, the pod's gone, right? Isn't that nice? Yeah, the pod. Take your pod and shove it. Um, and then I'd probably be outside the rest of this week, so that we'll probably get a little footage there and then wrap this video up. So hang in there. All right, I got this frame at the end of the understairs uh, closet, I guess it's going to be now. I'll set two 2x4s two onto that, kind of like just like rafters or something. I don't have to worry about the other end of them. I guess I could put an angle on the other end of them. Uh, and I put this ledger up here with this angle of the staircase on it, so these will have a, a plumb cut the way a rafter tip does. And so, yeah, I guess I'll plumb cut the other end of them, so the far end from here, the other side of this wall is thickness back here, 2 by 4 thickness, I guess we'll swing right up the end of that. That way, if uh, anybody comes to do anything with that stairs, which I highly doubt, anyway, you won't have some Fakakta raw end and stuff that nobody planned on you dealing with. Ed got up on his ladder and went through this whole area and uh, dragged a bunch of stuff out and things that we had left since demolition, since I just kind of called it quits. I was getting excited to uh, kick through that shit on the floor. Um, he was telling me everything's out of here, but, you know, those spikes beg to differ. Those spikes sticking down. What I'm saying is we got to get it clear for... They are going to use Pex-A, I guess. Maybe? Yeah, likely, I guess rather than onyx which is what is commonly used overhead too um but they need to have that area clear for the heat installation because we are going to do hydronic system um you're gonna i got a 26 inch wide rough opening here of conventional height so i can put a 24 inch door and have it swing out if uh we can live with that i can also put other types of doors and stuff in here or just leave it on finished you know raw opening um gas company's got to move our meter over it ended up right in the inside of the framing they're going to have me use a few different uh shorter nipples and elbows and just weave it over and come back in so it's where i want it without moving their bar or anything else which i understand they don't want to disrupt the ground but um you know goddamn if i wish if i didn't wish that just was in the right spot it's stuff that irritates me i just wasn't here for one second and it got past me um this worked out the way i wanted though for all intents and purposes so far as i can see so you got water you got gas we're gonna go to the left and um exhaust out through the rim and we'll go to the right and we'll um be the, that'll be the inlet for the um 
the air that the machine uses. So, last thing is we've got to get cond condensate or the water that falls out of any air that's, um, the, you know, combustion of it generates water. And then I would like to passively drain that through the wall over into the stack. So, uh, there's a chance of that. Or they may say, you know, here's a little pump and it just goes zoop outside, but then it's like, where where does it go outside you know it is just condensate but still then it's a little hole where when you're not using the machine all summer the mud dubber you know builds his nest in it and then the next season you all the time have a service call because they come out and finger bang the little condensate pipe tube that's all jammed up with wasp nest that's the type of shit why don't we just take a little bit of time put it into the you know sewer and we'll see ya so I think that's what we're doing. I think we're going to use copper in the web of this I-beam to go all the way down. And the reason being, it comes out of there. It stays kind of, we're going to insulate it so it may stand proud of the edge of the flange um, a little bit, but that's okay. It'll get us right in behind the stringer. So we can come in there. We don't have to cut the stringer or pu puncture. We don't have to sew the stairway into the systems of the house. And then, 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 pay attention to what you're drilling through and what you're weaving things in and around. I'm trying to put this in and use the stairway in such a way so that um, it's you know good enough forever. But if somebody wants to swap it out, there aren't a bunch of woven in components to do that. So anyway, right on through here until you're into the thickness, the width of this two by six wall that we needed for whatever reason here. So right on by and then turn and come out, come down, stay in the center line of this wall, go through here, go right through my vacuum cleaner tube and get manifolded up and slam jam into these wham bams. Um, hot. Two of them all, cooled off, back again, zoop zoop. Then these ducts if we're going to go so far as to get uh, cast iron radiators that are, you know, the age of the home, I found some short boys, uh, and I can get them flushed and, like, acid etched or whatever, and then do a quick paint job on them with some spray paint. But, you know, you get a lot of time there, and you go upstairs on the second floor, and you could send pecs up and come out through the old register in rigid pipe so it looks nice and do it to the bottom of that opening and take the register cover off. So someday if somebody wanted to make a quick drywall repair, you kind of could just do that and keep on a... Uh, rolling, um, you know, they'd have to disconnect the heater. We'll see how much of this all transpires here because it's just going to be a, an excellent upgrade from what it used to be to have the floor in the basement heating and the first floor heating. I talked to the heating contractor and he said, you know, you might get away with it. You're not going to make it 90 on the second floor, but it will certainly be, you know, relatively warm up there. So we'll just have to see. We're not made of money here. Um, what else? Plumbing inspection passed. No issues there. Um, we got the drains and stuff upstairs. Let me get a little light. Shine a little light on the subject. Nothing you haven't seen before. Ended up needing an extra tail piece or an extra long tail piece and an extension to get to the wall under the kitchen sink because somehow this drain is unconventionally far away from the wall and um, I don't know. Seem like I have used a regular tailpiece before. I guess it was just a, it needed like an eight inch tailpiece rather than a six, which you get with the kit. So I just needed a slightly longer tailpiece. My installation. Oh, you know what I might have done? <laughs> I normally I like twenty inches off the subfloor. I guess that would have been here. I was thinking if I'd taken away the cupboard, I normally I'd measure up, and that would have put me up higher. So maybe I'm a bit low than I normally would be. But no, I went to the subfloor here when I set that elevation. So anyway. Uh, just had to go back to the store. Couldn't just use the out-of-the-box P-trap because, again, I needed the extension here to there to get us into the wall, and I needed an extra long tailpiece. But I got it, and it worked out. And I've turned that, pushed it back in, you know, trimmed and slimmed this down as much as I could. Uh, I don't know. You know, I guess I could have been... On the other side where the vent is with the drain and vented that way and flip-flopped everything here. But I don't know that it would have been that much of a benefit. It wouldn't have been straight behind us. It would have been to the left about as much as we are to the right. So, I mean, the only thing you can really improve on here is to swing the trap well away from you. So all this room in the front, as a best practice, is free and clear. But we, I'm going to call that a win. Putting up W's. Uh, probably can go back down onto the flange. I got ye old wax ring and a set of the heavier 516th course 
So the quarter 20 boys, all brass. And under the sink, plug this unit, uh, you know, all back together again. Nothing's more than just snug, so we don't want to go crazy before things are aligned and hand tightened. But I just wanted to slam that much down. Oh, we got a couple titties on the lawn, if you know what I mean. Lawn titties. What does he, what is he talking about? Fool. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that cleavage. So, can't wait to get rid of that shit, like I said. Then we'll spread this shit out. I got stuck on window wells. I could have gotten those and thrown those on. Um, everyone carries one or two, but you want seven or eight. Ooh, you know, don't have that many in stock. So I have yet to come across who is, I guess they're just ordering them straight off the internet. If you're doing a new build or whatever around here, nobody's just got a stack. I mean, you wouldn't think they take that much room. I'm sure I just haven't found it. So we'll see what type we get. I could stick those on, and I will need to before I go grading up to the house, which is kind of where you start, really. So i got to get on that. And as soon as really nothing else could get doing, could get getting done, uh, i got to get back out here and do something with this rough opening. I know it's going to be a 36-inch door, so because this one is. And I just, once I knew what that was, I figured this one can't be any narrower. That would be super, super irritating. Um, you know. Not necessarily for Ed and his wife, but for move-ins, move-outs. I mean, it's just, I can find a 36-inch door. Uh, they're common, so we'll frame it up for that. Uh, it would be lovely to find the one and get it before I even started or finished up framing, but I intend to build that whether I've got a door or not. Starting to make game-time decisions. And again, this type of thing here, you know, the hot air that's coming off the basement floor is going to come right up and help the first floor. Um... So you, you're going to end up with a zone on all three floors in the end, but you could take zone one up to the second floor or up the stairs, you know, put that thermostat at the top of the stairs for now and leave zone two off if we haven't actually built zone two on the second floor. And then zone one would call for heat until it was a comfortable temperature halfway up the stairs or more and so then you ought to be able to play around with that and coax enough heat upstairs nothing i want to necessarily do to people but i don't want to beat them about the head and neck with the added cost of this entirely new heat system we really had hoped to um not have it it seems so stupid to put everything back in here that they had had for all, you know, for full house heat. And so that, that has really put us over the top in terms of the budget that we're working with. So we're going to start making some, you know, game time decisions and some concessions, which is what everybody's going to have to do because things are just um, outrageously priced right now. It's fair because the businesses have overhead and that's what overhead costs. But it's like, so you're going to chase it all the way back up to what... Um, ever is happening economically speaking and everything's just a tiny bit more than you could possibly imagine and altogether you can see how much goes into a project like this it really adds up those nickels and dimes will find you they know where you live and they've seen where you sleep and they're coming home to roost as the crow flies <laughs> um at this juncture so uh you know long story short we got to watch our pennies and we're still on track to make something great and to do it affordably for what it's going to end up being. But we're pulling strings. We're selling the furnace and the hot water tank. If you're trying to message me on Facebook Marketplace straight up with your address, and then when I ask you if you're asking me a question, you say, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to find out if you'll deliver that to me here. And I'm like, what? A $100 hot water tank? Uh, and then I had somebody else who wanted a guarantee that it was going to work when they took it home and they just couldn't understand why I wouldn't say something like that. And it's like, look, man, worked when removed. That's all the more I can tell you. If these things were working when they were removed, it's a hundred dollar hot water tank. You can go buy one and get it home and get it installed, you know, and spend over $2,000 or you could go get one and get it installed yourself and spend, you know, 500 bucks or 250 bucks all in, um, it makes a big difference where you start with the unit. Of course, a brand new unit's going to work flawlessly, or there will be consequences from you know where you bought it. Anyway, I don't understand what's going on uh, with the world today. <laughs> if you need me, I'll just be in this hole fixing things. I got to trim that top plate back. We got, like I said, a doorway over there. 
Uh, there was something else over there I wanted to mention. Oh, plywood. we got to get that on the wall first, even though he's going to use Unistrut to put that stuff up. And I think I'll probably wait for the unit to come in to figure out, you know, because they could be fully installed and the condensate could drip on the floor. And I can take it and run with it and do whatever I want. Um, I'm not in a big hurry to do that or the um, to get it done before they get here because they will be here next week. I'm really sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Just tying loose ends. I got to finish up this under the stairs and then framing's complete. Then all the wood and stuff can go out. I'm trying to get that done for this week when we go to the dump because there's strips and blocks and stuff that it's just going to be easier to throw away that way because they really don't like contractor garbage left by the street. So if we can't bring it out in a, in a garbage bag like it you know came out of a normal situation, we're going to have to figure something else out. So this place ought to get whipped into shape. I could take a bunch of tools home. Those guys don't want to trip through and try to set ladders up and around all my tools and junk, so we're going to clean that shit up. All right, I swear to God, I'm going to stop talking. Sorry. Okay, tomorrow we're going to be outside hauling stuff away and getting ready to grade. But today I was able to uh, uh, put up all the electrical outlet boxes and switch boxes and stuff. As you can see, the laser came in handy again, although I need a better tripod. My transit tripod would work for that. But since I got that, I took the transit home and, uh, you know, because that uh, tripod goes in the transit case. This laser case doesn't have room for a tripod. So anyway, I'm going to end up needing one that goes all the way to the floor. This has been irritating, but again... Once I got it to 48 inches, that'll mean that we can set all of our, you know, sheets against the wall, a quick trace and a notch, and then uh, we can rip, like I said, all my drywall sheets for from there to the ceiling. It's going to be a smaller dimension, uh, and then they'll just set on there. So you only got to do notching for these taller uh, things. They're all set, of course, to the laser, but maybe the floor comes and goes. So I checked that, too, in this room and all around. I went to 48 inches with a tape from the floor and made marks in the corners, which you can see, um, you know, we're pretty, we're all within, um, I'm sorry, there, we're well within, you know, what you can do with a drywall trim and a kerf of a blade and whatever, real good, real good, real good, um, and so this whole room is uppers, there's a lower below the window, I know there won't probably be anything in front of it, there's an upper and lower there, I expect, like I said, we're going to use found items and stuff here it's likely that you won't want to be overly long with a countertop or a kitchen a cabinet base or whatever here which will mean you'll play it back some which will mean there'll be a place to put a garbage can or off the edge of the counter if you don't want to look at a cord you can plug something in down there here uh we've got plenty of upper outlets this i was going to do a switch um for like if you've got upper cabinets for under cabinet lights in the future if you want to flip them all on whatever you know right over the workbench stuff you've got the other end of that switch would be here so you have a, all the main room light switch and the under cabinet lights back and forth right here or over there just because it you know made sense if you're sitting down i, I kind of visualize i'm trying to sort of visualize and i'm going to help set this up for ed uh, if he doesn't use it that way, then he doesn't use it that way. But I think it's going to be a switch box, I guess, long story short. Um, then you, so you come downstairs, you've got the stairwell light here and up there for just the stairwell. Turn it on and off up, upstairs, turn it on and off down here. And if you like to make a right, you can do the switch there. If you make a left, you got one, two switches here for a course of switched outlets through this sort of third of the whole house width and then uh at the second third or like two thirds of this space a second course of light so one and two one and two on off here you walk over here you have a third row of lights that you can do on off right here and then another switch here for on off anything specific to the laundry area on your way over here to do laundry okay or on your way over there to see what you're doing. And then again, this is more of a walk lane here, so we can turn things off behind us, on and off. And then if we're done here and we're headed upstairs, we can turn that stuff on and off, turn the light switch on or off for the stairwell, or on and off at the top. And that all made sense to me, so that's how I did it. Um, the outside of the house is underneath this big beam. Um, and then the garage takes off that way. So wherever we go out with the dryer vent, it's going to be here-ish. We're going to be able to stand at this sink that's right here. 
right? And we don't want to be bumping our butts against the dryer. So the dryer kind of starts here-ish and is right here-ish. So we're going to go up and out with the vent in the wall. But then above the dryer, probably not to the left-hand side. If you want to plug the dryer in, there's that there. Below is, a, is trouble because of this plumbing, so I stayed away from it until you're here, which I'll discuss later. But over in this region, we can run around at this height, dip down in to grab that guy and whatever. So there's a couple here, depending on one side or the other, if you have a little area to fold laundry. Um, that actually reminds me, and so this here is um, the outlets for the washer. Um, if we need 220, we'll have to be down there with a heavy different arrangement. There'll be another 110 outlet there in case things change or anything here. Um, if you want to do ironing or something, or if you want to plug the machine in and not look at it, uh, I'll probably slap one on over here again for a folding area well again the washer i guess sticks to here i don't think it makes any sense to have an outlet there so we're in good shape i literally bought one dozen dual gang and two dozen single gang and i was uh fairly happy here until i started rambling on this video with how everything seemed to work out in these areas we got one two three four roughly kind of those are a bit further apart those are a bit tighter um, things collect in the corner, an end table or whatever. I don't know. This would be a living room. I'm not quite sure. But I don't see the reason that you'd put these outlets up. We're more at a lower. The top of these are at 16 inches all the way around, which makes for a nice option for various baseboard without being too crowded and some white space between that and there and without being awkwardly tall. I think this door is it's definitely going to open out. It's unlikely that we'll be forced to put one on here, and I don't want one that's... Um, I don't know how I even talk about that. It, it, it would be right, right hand out swing. So anyway, it'll be swinging like this off the hinges here. Switch on and off for the light in this room. And at least one outlet, I think that combi unit plugs in with the lamp cord. I'm going to do these lower down. The water's on this side, and you really aren't going to want to kick through anything on either wall, either wall here. I'd probably stay away from the water if I can help it. Um, so, and we'll unlikely be in the corner right there. There'll be a stick here. So I think, if anything, we'll switch to a dual gang box there just to get four outlets in here. You never know what you want to plug in here if you're doing a little service here and you got a couple tools that you want to plug right in. And, you know, if the door opens like that, well, then it's unhandy to go out and around and plug in here. So then you're plugged in over there and you're kicking through. Anyway, you want a couple things in a utility space. So, again, I probably go to dual gang there. Light switch here. Um, all the rest of these down low. It's one on the chimney over there to one side of the clean out. And this is, you know my thinking, kind of these areas. Then, within that, if I'm up and down in a space, well then, uh, basically as you look at these, in almost every case, they're tagged down to the right-hand side, right, right, that's a left, but that's right, right, right. Uh, that faces us um, on the left-hand side because on the other side was where it made more sense to have the uh, ground fault circuit uh, outlet right over the vanity. That will also be protected by one, whether the actual item is the ground fault protection is there or there. Um, remains to be seen. Actually, I think you're going to want, as far as the bathroom is concerned, you come in, you make a left, you got the main bathroom light, and then you have vanity light. One of the, the main light, main light ought to be slaved to the fan. Um, we don't have to put a fan in for this, and it'll be easy enough for somebody to add in the future, but I might wire it over here. Um, I really like to see the van the fan run whenever the light comes on. That way um, it doesn't hurt anything and people are either pooping or taking a shower or washing their hands, it's on and off. It really isn't an energy suck, but that way people always have the fan running when they're doing anything in the bathroom, which is when it needs to be on. If you give them the option to turn it on or off, people don't like to listen to it or don't remember, and then there's no point in having the fan because it's never used and the room gets all um, damp and whatever else. So we might want three here. The two different, the fan light, the vanity light, and I guess I did just plan on this being the, if you have a curling iron or a straightener or whatever else, you want a ground fault circuit interrupted outlet right around the sink right in here. really doesn't need to be any other um, electrical in there. But anyway, that was why, since that made sense to be on that side, um, they end up left, left instead of right, right, I guess, you know, take that for what it's worth. But right hand side again, right hand side again, and right here, we're in the same bay. So we're not going to have to come through um, just to have an outlet here. It makes for another hole to drill. So things like that where we're going to be smart about it. Um, in this case, it's in the same bay, but they're on either side, just because that would be too tight to the corner. That's getting to be ridiculous. You want to pay attention to what you have for white space here. Um, this is a little bit tight, although this is an outside drywall, so that's fine there. I don't want any outlets in this space. Um, 
because you really aren't going to leave the door hang open, plug things in, and utilize things out here. And if you give somebody an outlet to plug in a charger or whatever else, a trickle charger or something else like that, and they close this place up and forget about it and whatever, and you have an electrical failure in here, it starts a fire. So I'm just not going to give anybody an outlet in here. But I would like to see a light switch here. What did we say? If this door opens right hand in swing and you're coming out through the door, uh, you don't want to get smacked in the mouth with this door swinging open for whatever small, you know, unlikely reason that someone's in there and opens the door. So really this needs to open this way because it can't open in. It would open out like that. So then your switch really would be over here. Um, and so I may put a light switch there and have a simple circuit and just probably put one of those ceramic bulb base holders right here just to, or probably maybe face it down somewhere where you get the whole thing where you can just slap a light on see what you're trying to do and get back out oh i forget this isn't going to be open uh and so since this is solo we may end up mr solo dolo we may end up having to put a light in the corner or maybe over there's best because since the door opens this way see it keeps you from getting smacked but also it's unlikely that you're going to clean this bulb that sticks out kind of a little bit here you know like that it's unlikely that you're going to brush right through here and break him off because you're going to have to be opening the door to its full fullest to start with and then you'll be aware of this if you let it stick out over here then the traffic going by could break it off so we want to think about that stuff we've got a couple fixture boxes to get uh another you know one or two double gang boxes a couple single gang boxes we'll be doing some switching back and forth no pun intended um to dial in just exactly what we want but this is a great you know initial stab at things um i thought about this thing here it was too bad it didn't go right to 48 being so close but you see it's got a bezel so the bezel will be up here and then the outlet cover will be a bit bigger than the box and they'll be real close to level would it be sweet if they were uh absolutely perfect yeah could i cheat it sure I may just get the bezel out of this here and stick it there and just cheat this down, up or down, just so that when we get all done, it's nice when things like that that are so close, they're not just a touch off. You want it to be, you know, perfect. Um, there you go. We got some, you know, like, I don't know just how to get the other end of the circuit through one of these beams. Uh, this may be a complicated you know, weirdly counterintuitive way of running all around to grab a switch and install it at the top. I think there's a switch. I don't know how they used to turn that. Because there's a light here, and this is what we're talking about, something like this underneath the stairs. But there's no switch here. Uh, maybe... I don't know how the hell you turn the basement lights on before, so... So, you know, somehow we'll make that happen. <laughs> um, anyway, that's about all I can do here. We've got heat next week for the installation oh i've got the plywood cladding made this piece is ready with the hole in it um this hasn't been put on yet because i don't have short nails to shoot it i gotta make that little rip but he's out of the next full sheet and i haven't bothered um i would like to to start with i started to think i would like to straighten out the valve uh handle so we haven't got to have a four or five inch diameter hole to go over this so to open the valve we've got to take water pressure off so we have to go out to the road and turn the pressure off but if the pressure is being turned off then our next biggest size is like from this sort of shoulder to there is like a three inch hole but if i spin the valve off of this hex the two inch hole will clear that hex and so i made the two inch hole and so we will be turning off the water at the street spinning the valve off weaseling this sheet in with this big hole in it there trying to go over this way enough and to slip up and on to that enough to slide back down into place and mount it and then come back and put the valve back on and go back out to the road and turn the water on um also that we got the plywood up on the wall in here um and there's the old water meter that we want to put on this and then we got to have a check valve and we got to have a pressure regulator and we got to have something else I don't recall. Um, we got to move the gas like I was talking about before, probably. I'm sorry with the redundancy, but um, yeah. Talked to the heating contractor about the installation specifics. I think we're going to be square on that. I probably talked about what I wanted to do, and I don't remember running into any problems. He said he could do what I wanted, so we can keep a lookout for that. Uh, you saw the dirt out front. I guess tomorrow, like I said, we're going to take a bunch of stuff to the dump, and then we'll maybe get some footage of putting up the window wells and doing some grading. I guess I could talk a little bit about, like, I don't really feel the urge 
to bring the grate up here any higher than the top of that window well there, out back. Um, it's a full step up then. I mean, it'll come up some. We'll be out here by, like, with a little bit. But it'll be a full step up and into the garage, but I don't mind that. There's also supposed to be a deck here in the future. Uh, if you go right up to this level, to where you're, you know, at the elevation of the bottom of the vent, well, then it's less of a step up. But that moisture can sit in that material and kind of lift on that lip of the new garage floor and try to break that off by swelling and, like, pushing up, crack it or whatever like that. So I'd like to stay away from that situation. This window well has been installed, and so if we went up that far, I'd have to slap another one on, uh, cut the top edge of that, and try to get another one attached to where it isn't a obviously an addition or like dig that one out. I don't want to do any of that. Um, and and so this window would be exposed, this window would be exposed, and we'd be at the level of the dimple mat. And that, when you stand inside, you can kind of see out down through here. Same will go for the egress window in that way. But on this side, I would like to come up, you know, because that's kind of where we are here already, right? But I'd like to actually be up here because I think we're just too visually high. We're higher than we used to be from the ground before. Um, and so here somewhere we'll come through and then just try to elegantly swing up as we come around the corner. This will be the grade in through here. I can, the shortest window I can get is a 12-incher, which is going to be up here, and I'd really like to be down there. So we'll have to see how much doing it'll take. If I'm putting the backhoe on, maybe I'll just scratch across the front of these belligerent big scoops to make plenty of room to put that up the way I want it and the place I want it and then backfill up against it no problem and just be quick about it um, and that'll carry us around at that height through the front of the house it'll be where we told them we wanted the gas meter I gotta take these stairs away to get that done it'll obscure a lot of this green pipe here and then furthermore when they do a flower bed or whatever and they mulch that stuff it really will they put a rock in a strategic position or get some of those plastic rocks um, and then uh, we will be coming up you know, to practically flush with the driveway material. However, that's going to be really gooey millings, asphalt millings, if I can get them. And it'll be so oily, uh, the idea is that it ought to not become saturated with moisture here and heave on that lip right there. And we are going to end up putting new gutters and downspouts, gu 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 gutters and downspouts, um, which should further keep things from being, you know, all that wet. At some point, I'm going to cut those branches off, too. But, um... Tomorrow is, like I said, just moving stuff out. Got the truck back. Got to take stuff out of here that isn't getting thrown away. Um, $3,500 later, um, and that was after I spent a couple thousand dollars on new heads and peripherals and months and months of my time. Obviously not straight working, but whenever I could get to it, getting through the teardown and the rebuild. So it's been extreme. I got these uh, West Coast mirrors. And this one was broken, so I had the glass replaced. But when I put it in, I could see it was kind of like a funhouse mirror. It was like warped, whether it was too tight in there or the piece itself was optically incorrect. It was making me sick to look at the reflection while towing and stuff. Um, so I've already had to leave that with the place and see if they could do anything for me there. And um, yada yada, it's never ending with this thing. But it seems to be running well enough to tow tomorrow. It's got a real spongy brake pedal that they checked all out for me and couldn't figure out. I think I need a new booster. Anyway, uh, and I still can't take these pieces home, see, because if I load them on a trailer and I go home, I haven't got the skid steer from loading them here, and vice versa. If I get the skid steer home, I can't load them up here to bring them home. So I'm going to set them out probably on the edge of the street so that this area can be... I'm not going to go grading in through there. We haven't really... That'll be blended. You know, we'll come out to a knife edge here, and it'll peter out, especially around the trees. But this area here does need to be graded, not to mention get rid of all this big stone. So this stuff's got to be shifted over. This is going tonight. I think the hot water tank's going for 100 bucks later. Today, this I'll probably end up taking home just to continue to try and sell it secondhand to get it out of here. And all the rest of this shit's going to the proptical, propter, proper receptacle. What do you two think you're doing? Yeah, critters. Critters. So, I guess I'll just stop talking and prove it. All right, truck's back. Got the mirror back. It's not as distorted as it used to be, although it's not as good as the other side. But that's not the point. We're uh, idled up. Coast the Uzi Uzi Act coating has got to drive by. 
we're gonna get concrete out of here. That's the biggest hassle for me. It's the stuff I wanna make sure to get rid of. Uh, they'll take it for free and grind it up and use it for something else at the place I go. So those pieces, those pieces, I just don't think there's anything redeemable unless they're two feet wide, which none of them really are. Ragged edges, yada yada. All those nuggets. Um, we'll throw those in there and we'll get rid of that. That's plenty of weight, trust me. Uh, I like that it's going to all sit down inside. And we'll get that out of here. And then I'm going to get that mortar and those extra blocks. I don't know if they'll take those blocks back, but I'll bother to load those in. And uh, um, maybe they'll take them in seconds and give me no money back. But I basically don't want them on the site anymore and I don't want to take them home. That's not enough to do anything with and they're heavy and irritating. So... Let's get that much done. Let me put you up on the truck, see if we can't catch some of this Andrew Camaretta type action. I don't know how that guy makes so many hundreds of thousands of views on watching machinery. I guess it's cool for, I guess it's cool. Let's find a good spot to watch me. Watch me, watch me, watch me work. All right, well, once I solve this mechanical problem where there's no pin to safely hold these doors from trying to swing shut when I dump this thing, uh, which theoretically is why I rent and don't buy and have to maintain my own trailer, because obviously wouldn't get to that point if I did, but the rental idea was so that I didn't ever have to relieve and worry about anything. I could just drive away with a piece of equipment that was ready to work. She told me she didn't want all that plastic in there, and they're going to grind this up, see? In process, that may even be ground concrete there, although it looks like crushed limestone. But they want clean concrete, this smaller stone they can handle, because obviously that aggregate's in the slab. But this is going to gum the machine up. I don't know why that's wet after all these. Oh, that's going to be casting resin that had spilled. Or no, silicone, that's it. Uncatalyzed mold making silicone from Ed's shop that uh, leached down or wherever he had a big spill I remember we were like squeegeeing it up off the floor I'm so concerned that his brand new concrete floor in his basement in his workshop is going to get all shit up this guy's talking about ponies about it I don't know. Anyway, I told her I'd do what I could do there. That there is what I can do for you. Uh, best case scenario. So you want to watch it because you're going to be back here another time. And if they mark you as somebody who brings up shit, garbage that gets in their way and fucks some shit up, then they won't let you. So this is free to dump. <clears throat> well, for me and for my customer, everybody for the customer. Of course, they're going to pay the trailer rental and my time and overhead for the truck so things add up there was a cost to dumping which there'll be today when we go to the dump dump with the garbage garbage um, there's that cost too but anyway this is a nice thing to do here you're gonna look for the local material uh, reclamation site dump all your shit out remember that the Goddamn parking brake cable that you paid an extra 300 or more dollars in diagnostic time to <clears throat> make sure to get working right. It's absolutely the right length for this truck, for this wheelbase. Um, however, it won't tighten up. And so I gotta like 
take an inch out of it somehow and swedge it back together again and then it really isn't factory or coated anymore so I can monkey all around with that but I did pay to professionally diagnose the fact that yes indeed I had spec'd the right cable there's just something fucking weird about this truck so anyway dumping stuff out moves the truck on me until I can get that parking brake fixed uh, that stuff stuck on the tailgate without pulling forward a little bit see this it's all the stuff you gotta remember then I can be sure it's out then I can turn the truck off then I can put it in gear and then I can oh I could have probably dumped with out the truck running it's a battery in here but anyway then this will go back down again this is how the dump trailer works kids but I guess if you're doing a project like this yourself and you may even go so far as to rent a pickup and a trailer for the day it's, it's hairy if you've never towed before. I'm all the time thinking about all the different liabilities and things that could go wrong. I just came through this whole industrial park area and people are walking there, uh, walking the, on the street and walking and bicycling and walking the kids in the stroller. It's like, why are you people out here? I've got these fenders outside of my truck whip going down the road, so I don't wanna cut back in too soon on somebody and and I don't want anything to happen, so anyway, I actually hate towing as much as I do it. That's why I've been in the market for a full-size dump truck. Uh, believe it or not, obviously that'll wreck shit just as quick or quicker as a trailer, but it's one unarticulated unit going down the road, and I want one that I can see through the uh, cab protection on the bucket right out and over the tailgate on it it'd be like a rugby dump or a low side dump i'd like the sides to fold down i was looking at one locally um the guy sold out from underneath me like the biggest dickhead in the absolute universe instead of giving me an option to uh, make good on my offer when he got the same exact cash offer from someone else after i had discussed it with him and told him i wanted to get back to him about a debacle mechanical service it apparently needed I'm gonna make sure I know what I'm getting involved in. But, uh, like I said, I missed out on that. So, working on that hard to try and put it together for this day uh, to break that truck in. But she just didn't happen for us. Hopefully she's content with all that. I'll make sure this stuff is latched and, cause this will also swing out like uh, entirely up here if it's not pinned which it isn't pinned there, but they did put one pin in on this side. So there you go. How to dump concrete off at the dump, or at the place, I don't want to see that either. Sorry everybody, sorry everybody, oh they're gonna hate this. That's it, this is the edge of the, the, edge of the floor, the silicone leached down on one side, and I'm sorry, maybe they don't like, I'm sure they don't like hitting the machine, but I, they're also probably liable. Now it's trapped under there and I can't get it. They're also probably liable for it blowing all over the place. Because if your operation is responsible for a bunch of, uh, especially near a waterway, which I believe that's a creek in there, EPA and stuff, all it takes is one person to sniff that out and uh, they'll always be watching that and make sure your operation isn't contributing uh, crap to the environment. All right, I need two hands and another glove on my hand. I'll see if I can't lever that thing up and get the rest of that plastic out from underneath it. Uh, let's see. All right, my guy, the number one pony, number one pony fan over there helped me out flipping that up. This here is the photographic evidence. The fact that I've taken as much plastic off of this thing as I can without making just a thousand more pieces. And we'll do that much too so that you don't see no evil, no hear no evil. Um, genuinely, I want to do everything I can, both for this business and for the environment. But at a certain point, I can't take that back home again. So there you go. Back to work. Get some more stuff. Okay, so the place where I'm taking the block and the mortar is far nearer. And they are open a half an hour later today than the dump is. So we're going to go with all the wood and crap for the dump. And I'll put you, I guess, up here so you can watch all of that occur.
Okay, this one's for my dad. He loves listening to the glass break. Going back to multiplayer on the Nintendo 64, playing GoldenEye, breaking glass, shooting it out. Just thinks it's great. I love it myself. So, here you go, Pop. Love you. Wish you were here. At least I can... He's not dead, guys. He's just out of state. Anyway, uh, he watches sometimes. Uh, I'm going to try and break this thing for you without making a big mess. Yeah, well, best I could do. I was hoping it would explode, but nothing's ever quite as good as in the movies or in games. All right, let's go back to time lapse and finish up the rest of this. I got that root ball and stuff over there. Then we hang out here and wait for somebody to tell us to back into one of those holes and dump the stuff on the floor. Unfortunately, it's not easy to get camera footage like an imbecile in a place like this running around trying to get driven on. They don't want to deal with you, so I'm not doing that much. But it looks like dumping a trailer full of garbage out on the ground. And then we'll pay 70-something a ton. I don't know if even there's might be a ton. There, it's in a, I bet you there's... What are we going to say here? There is, I don't know, 1,400 some pounds. Let's see what the slip says. Okay, I guess this block isn't as bad as I thought. It needs to be in resaleable condition. I mean, that's a chip. That's a chip. This is dirt that will rinse off in the rain. That's chipped. I'm just going to take this many over. Careful. See what they give me in those bags of mortar. We'll just try to one, two, slide them in the back. See if we can keep... See if we can tell the real big fans of the channel you saw me unload this stuff from, I think it was a U-Haul trailer months ago. Uh, but the minute I got into it in the street, I had a flat tire that I had to deal with. So let's see if we can keep from getting a flat, um, get it in there and get it right back to the store. That's sort of the most important thing left to do today. That steel could really get consolidated flat. I mean, I kept it all as usable duct work for somebody. I may leave this over till tomorrow I don't know this here trying to sell stuff secondhand I've dealt with so many people that just cannot keep it together eventually I'll probably lose my temper and throw all that stuff out or give it to the scrap guy I don't know TBD on that but let's load this stuff up Yeah, we'll see what they say. Had some dirt and shit on them here. I mean, if you leave that set out, they'll get rained on and look fine other than the physical damage. This obviously you don't want to get rained on, and it hasn't been rained on, although we got scratch and tear in the bags. It's perfectly usable stuff, but I understand people don't want to pay top dollar for that. I don't know. Let's see if he'll, you know, give me my money back minus the restock fee. And then just take um, anything else that he can't apparently sell. 
just as a second or something like that. I really couldn't care less. Uh, I just wanted to not have to come back to the job site. So let's go over and get that much done. The thing about this steel is, like I say, it goes with the furnace if somebody wants to build. But there's also like precious metal. There's copper wire. And we've got an asbestos situation that they're going to know about at the, at the steel place and not want to have to deal with. That really, I should have... What I should have done is just put it in the bottom of that load I just took back to the dump and gotten it into the landfill, basically. Sorry, but um, copper pipe and wire. Um, that might even... No, it's probably fiberglass wrapped on that. Um, there's some stainless here. I think this is stainless. This is stainless. That's stainless. That's stainless. So, you know, some stuff that's worth something here. Not Nothing, but... Let's uh, see what they'll give us for this here, and then we're kind of done racing the clock today. So they'll give me everything back, or they'll take all these blocks back with the restock fee off of them, but they were fine. The bags, there's two bags that were ripped open and spilling, which I get. This place will make you um, a yard and a quarter. I don't know where it is. They've got a little trailer, believe it or not, a little concrete trailer, and you can make arrangements and show up and get hitched and leave with a fresh rolling batch of concrete and go do a little project out of the trailer and bring it back to them and they'll wash it down and stuff which is pretty sweet um and so that's nice of them too to do what they could here for me they'll take uh, these back even though they're missing a little bit of material obviously that's where they get uh you end up with mortar in there anyway so no big but uh this is about all the more I can do today with the trailer I'll run it up on the site and knock the beat it with a hammer quick get the glass to fall out into the site and I'll cover that with plenty of dirt. He's got to reach in here with his extensions and drag the pallet out but see you guys back at the workshop. Oh yeah so fresh and so clean clean sort of <laughs> by comparison relatively speaking. I wrap this stuff up it just seems an attractive nuisance if kids any one of them or anybody even obviously a full-blown adult anything just don't want to leave that for all too long. It's the reason why I didn't put it there right to start with. Um, if it were to tip over on somebody, we want to be careful. So that's scheduled to get out of here next week, first thing, basically. And so tomorrow, we'll take the rebar back, get the window wells on, get this stuff spread around, generally speaking, in the front, kind of back to the plane in the front of the house. This is mostly for all out here, and kind of get driveway prep, and there's little miscellaneous things that can't be left as they lie and stuff, too. I'm going to squeegee off or back drag off down to the asphalt or whatever you want to call this here and get this stuff shaped up and over to the edge some and then we got to see about getting some millings delivered and spread around uh let's see if we can't get that done tomorrow actually truck's looking pretty good got those west coast mirrors on there getting used to those they're right in the way of trying to see left to right when you're trying to turn out into traffic so that's gonna take some doing these old nut certs from the old windows, hopefully they wind up underneath the newer. We're going to do a much bigger layout, take the trim off the doors, try to cover those up. Or, and this is the old hole here, I put some packing tape over. We might be in the market for just a pair of red doors, OBS4 doors. Um, we'll have to see. And I think we're going to go up three inches with a lift kit. Seems silly, but the truck's got 30-year-old suspension. It's a two-wheel drive truck, but that four-wheel drive ride height just looks so much better. And uh, I rolled up next to my buddy, has the same truck with four-wheel drive, and just another three more inches of wheel gap. My truck's about uh, a hair under 20 inches from the wheel arch to the center line of the axles, and the four-wheel drive truck is a hair under 23 inches. So, essentially, I did the math. And we'll get the trailer taken back, and we'll pick up dinner on the way home. Um, yeah, get a little footage tomorrow. We'll see you.
Hey now, doesn't that look so much better? Got these window wells in. There's room here, it's gonna settle, and there's room to build up more. I just wanted to get the two loads that we got spread out in the front and all the window wells up, like I've said 18 times probably in this video, sorry. But I just gotta see it before I'll believe it. Well, there you go. <clears throat> we gotta do a grade transition around this corner, but I think that'll be easy enough to do. Mostly I don't mind, mostly I don't wanna be this high because then you won't see out. And that egress window is going to be a nice little place to try and see it. So I think we'll just real comfortably just roll right down here to this level. It ought to be completely lost. And they said they want a rain barrel or something here, so we'll see about that. Got that loosened up while I had the backhoe on. That stone, what did I say? Um, oh, well, we'll sprinkle some down in all the window wells. We'll bring up the bottom surface to the glass block when we get all done. I'll hoe out some stuff if it needs to come down. So I'm gonna try scraping it away while I was there, but we'll put some of that washed stone for the last couple of inches. That'll make them look real nice when you look down in there, if you're into checking out window wells. But um, just a nice way to make that last little bit count. We'll get some nice asphalt millings on the driveway. And when everything's been put down and kind of back dragged, finally, then we will roll it all with the five ton um, vibratory driving like steamroller looking ass roller device these are our precious metals there's copper in that and uh, in the bx cable obviously the wire is in the water lines and this was stainless so i'll try to get some money toward their uh project from there i want to blend into the neighbor but we'll ask permission before we do that i mean that's just like a rotten hole in the ragged edge here i can't really work from my side i have to kind of be on the other side to feather like especially this shoulder right here I want to be driving there, backing up, and pulling this off to about here. See? Back there. Probably can't see this, but this is low here. And so we want to drag it out to about there. And then this will all be seated. It's too bad they, they hydro seeded all the gas well stuff, and we just missed them. Maybe they can come back and help us out some. Um, they may say, you know, as a technicality, it wasn't grass when we started, so we haven't, we're not obligated to put grass back. They've been nice so far, so I don't expect any of that. You guys have seen the state of it inside. Um, I guess I can show you. We're working on the upstairs bathroom. Ed's just champing at the bit to do stuff up there. Um, he's made a couple small errors. Um, he's a talented guy, mostly, you know, gets done what we've got to do. But all it takes is one small oversight, and whatever you've done won't work. And I keep telling him, you know, let's avoid that, but there's only so much you can say. Um, and so first we had the subfloor, I don't have any light right here, but first we had it split this way on where we had things off. And I told him, you really want to put it split on a joist. He said, well, why don't we just take the tub out? Let's just keep, you know, the scope can just grow and grow and grow. No, that would be ideal. I mean, this tub and the fact that there's no waterproof membrane behind this old tiled shower and stuff is all... If you were truly doing a renovation here, that would all everything would go down to the framing in here, and you'd start again with solid subfloor. In lieu of that, I absolutely wanted to get rid of the boards up into the tub and over into the closet area. And so I said, fill it to here, because there's a double here, and then we'll be on the left will be on the one joist, and the right will be on the new joist, and then this piece will sit in. Let's we'll see if we can't slide it into the face frame to this cupboard or dismantle this face frame or take the face frame out carefully. And he's getting bent out of shape about that, but it's like it's worth making a solid two-piece subfloor repair, glued and screwed with the edges right in the traffic lane on nice heavy joists. And then someday, when someone does a proper renovation and they tear this place all the way down to the framing in the subfloor, they'll see that, oh, hey, all I got to do is put one more rectangle in, essentially, of subfloor and block the edges, unfortunately, because we couldn't get that. Uh, there's no tongue and groove there or whatever. Um, however, it'll be ideal. He wanted to put, like, a piece of plywood in there with a board on one side, a couple boards in the middle, and then another piece here. And it's like nobody is going to want a, you know, I'm being... It's hyperbole, but three, even three or four pieces of plywood in here is a big 
big no-no. I really want to avoid that. Two pieces with the one at traffic edge right on framing. That's how you want things to be. That way, anybody who wants, if they want to do tile or anything else, you haven't got to add a bunch more layers. You haven't got to have a custom transition up to like almost an inch higher out from out in the hallway to up in the bathroom floor. None of that. We just start with a nice glued down piece of heavy, 19, 30 seconds or whatever. It's three quarter inch, basically nominal. Um, BC plywood. Notice no knot holes. If there were any, they'd be filled with a football. Uh, the knot, this, is, this is the B side, the C side's on the bottom. There are some kind of marks and knots on that side. I don't care. Uh, AB plywood's going to have a sanded side. Not necessary. CDX is a C side, D side. Sometimes that C side looks like this, so I'll buy CDX. That's really for um, your roof deck. If you've got a 24-inch rafter center, then you can do 5 eighths or 3 quarter roof. Um, I don't really, sometimes I've seen CDX, especially lately, so shitty that there's no way I'd use it for subfloor because you end up with all these knot hole uh, things that you got to fill with um, leveler and whatever else. And for all that messing around, I can go up another 10 to 20% on the cost of a sheet and just get something that's smooth on one side. Anyway, that's what we did here. Ed's in the middle of this. He's got our piece cut. He's gonna, we're going to find out how to get this in here. And we're going to open up this wall on this side. We're going to get the sink. Step we're going to get the sink, uh, supply, water supply, and drain rebuilt over to the plastic stack, get the um, toilet rebuilt and the tub rebuilt all correctly, and then 100% new PEX water supply will feed up from the basement and tie it all in in this wall. 100% new PVC drains all the way out to the road will be where we're living. We're going to get some next weekend. We're going out of town, and uh, on the way home, I'm going to pick up a half a dozen 10 inch long, 38 inch tall cast iron radiators. And I think um, this is the only one that's going to be trouble. I think we'll come up to here, but then we'll turn. I don't know which way the joists go. Uh, where the hell are we here? And they probably go like this, which would be ideal. So here we'll turn, go over, and come up to the floor so that the radiator can sit kind of in front of that window. Maybe. Yeah, that's the unhandy one in the master bedroom here. I'm going to fall down the stairs. The others, um, we'll get one probably. That's the thing I want them. It'd be nice to leave room for it between the sink and the wall, kind of. I really have all the places in here. You don't want it in the closet. I don't know. Really, it should go right, to, right here. Not in the way of the door, which what swings this way. So if the door swings like that, it needs to sit right there. That needs to be where the radiator is in the bathroom. Or we might do a baseboard unit in this room only. I hate to mix and match like this if we're going on all this trouble to get the cast iron ones. But along the wall right there would be a nice place for it. And I know in here, like in front of the, ra uh, the register, this is where the duct comes up from upstairs. See? So set one of those short radiators here. Go right into the wall, into like hard line into the wall to PEX to right straight down to the basement. Same goes for right here to the left. Um see uh, there it is so we'll have to do we'll have to set the radiator here and just it's going to be rough um but i don't want to be so rough that it's a nightmare to finish around later we're just not finishing around it now so we want to be smart about that just got done taking stuff to the dump and right away plenty of more uh wood and debris and over in that corner set it right in front of that one so at least we'll use three to four of those cast iron radiators i'll probably buy them all considering what the guy needs for them i may not i certainly won't charge um ed and beth for any more of them or the flushing of any more of them than we end up using for the house here but i may just buy them all and flush them all uh those we don't use i'll put i'll do on my own dime and we'll have those for another project um or for resale i can it's pretty what do you call it popular to do if you have if I buy, I think he's got eight, and I use four. If I had four that I also rinsed out, I'd be able to get my money out of them to somebody like me who's trying to use them for a project. So uh, we need a little more material out there. Ed's wailing on that upstairs bathroom. Next week, uh, i got to get my planer out of here. Next week, Monday, I'm getting that concrete out of here. Tuesday, two more loads of this stuff that we'll go down the side with and probably work on the backyard. Um, I was thinking I had to get my skid steer, and it wouldn't be here, but... When I'm done offloading those pieces at my house, I'll load the students here back up and bring it over to the job site before I take the trailer back. So it'll only go home and then back again because we'll be needing it. Then I'll get that stuff spread out and um, dial up the backyard some. The wash and dryer and that sink, you know, you wish you could put it inside where it kind of is going to live, but it would just be massively in the way right now. 
It's just too tight down there. Maybe after they're done with the heating install. I don't know. The water supply and electrical. It's just you got ladders and bodies and all of a sudden that stuff's in the way. So anyway, I'll probably sit right there until we're done. Although it's in the way of the grading and work that I'm going to do in the backyard. So we may move it once. Maybe a little closer and put a tarp over it. Uh, the front wooden stairs, I was going to cut them down now that the grade is higher. But I may bring them back and slap them up here and just build a shorter set for out front. Because if I cut a step and a half or two off of those and put them out front, well, I can't do anything with them out here. Um, so we want to be smart about that. Let's look critically at that. But uh, it's Friday. It's after 6 o'clock. Um, the jeans, wool socks, and work boots were a uh, bad choice. Today got warmer than I thought. And I've put off eating any real food, really. So anyway, I've come to the end of my rope. Getting excited. Ooh, and I got a little something in the works. If you're a fan of the channel overall and my and my uh, whole thing, more so than just this project, we got updated art for the truck, we got changes for the truck coming, and I got a different kind of a vehicle, eh? Uh, I'll unveil that soon. A little uh, little head turner, little daily driver vehicle that I think is going to be pretty cool, but you have to stay tuned for that. As far as uh, this episode, let's call it here. How about that? Uh, I don't know what these are anymore. I was trying to keep them organized by task. But anyway, that's an end to this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you.